How's it going everyone? It's Jesse. Happy 2021. I'm in the background right now trying to set up my video on my laptop. Get the live feed up and running so I can monitor everything. So bear with me just a little bit. What's up, Michelle Palmer? Kimberly Bowden, how's it going? Hang tight, folks. Hang tight, hang tight, and I'll be up to the front of the camera in just a little bit. Welcome to all of you. As you guys jump onto my feed, please say hello. Let me know where you guys are painting from, who you're painting with. All right, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Okay, found it. What's happening, Linda from Nova Scotia? How are you? Welcome, welcome. All right, everyone. Let me lower the volume on my feet so that it's not interfering with, with uh, me talking so that there's no feedback and stuff. How's it going, everyone? It's Jesse. Happy New Year. Thank you guys all for being here. Also, let me lower my music just a touch. It's a little loud. I can hear really loudly over here because it's coming from my laptop, so give me one second. You guys are all on here a little bit early as I promised I would be. Not as early as I would have liked to, always having to deal with some spammers. I like to jump on here, try to mess with our feed. So I was a little bit busy deleting that stuff. For those of you that are here new to the channel, please be aware that spammers like to jump on here during the live feed and they post links in the comment section where they're trying to lead you away from the page okay you uh, everything happens right here on painting with jesse the life feed happens here so please do not click on any of those links they are just trying to mess with you guys steal your information maybe credit card payment info that kind of stuff so again everything happens here um, my name is jesse we will get started at at three o'clock exactly three o'clock west coast time so that's about eight minutes away from now. Okay, what's happening, Stephanie? Yeah, this is a cool one. This is actually pretty cool, huh? We'll talk about all the details on this right when we get started at three o'clock. Um, like I said, about eight minutes, we'll talk about details, supplies, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, how are we gonna do this, especially for all the new people. It's helpful, helpful information for all of you to have so that you, you all know how this works. Okay, what's all the stuff behind me? Well, these are all really cool paintings that we've done over the past few weeks. Um, and months even, so if you, any, any of you are interested, oh, got a commercial, hang on a second folks, I'm playing uh, copyright free music in the background, got to skip a commercial here, there we go, get that out of there. Um, if any of you are interested in going back and doing any of these past videos, you guys are going to want to go to the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook, at the very top there's, a, uh, I think it's up towards the left hand side, I can't remember. But if you go to the top of the main painting with Jesse Page right here on Facebook, there's a live tab. You click on that and you'll get a chance to see all the old uh, videos that we've done over the past weeks and months. A bunch of the stuff that you see behind me is there. <clears throat> so those tutorials are all waiting for you guys to come out and do them. What's up, Penny Colt? How are you? Um, again, folks, I just want you guys all to be aware that there are spammers that come up in the comment section. Uh... Somebody, somebody's telling me to have paint on my forehead. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I, I think I was, uh, or something. Anyway, I'll check right now. No big deal. Uh, no big deal. I'll check. Somebody says, it was my wife. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I do. Anyway, folks. So, um, all the videos behind me, there's stuff that you can do. Uh, they're all pre-recorded, right? You guys can always go back and do those. But what's coming up here over the next few weeks actually next couple of weeks we got a bunch of really cool kids events we got actually first first one that's coming up is next week yoda okay we got yoda coming up uh i believe this is next tuesday we'll be teaching you guys how to draw and how to paint this entirely from scratch then i've got uh the following tuesday we've got toothless from how to train your dragon that one's coming up these are all kids centric kid centric painting events but anyone can join then of course for all of you Among Us fans we got these this really cool uh, piece coming up I believe this one is three weeks away four weeks away I can't remember now 
You guys will have to go to the event tab on my main painting with Jesse Page to look at all the dates for these really awesome events. The next all ages uh, event that's coming up, and I don't have a date for it just yet, <clears throat> is this one right here. This really cool uh, polar bear with the uh, aurora borealis in the background uh, in the sky. This one's coming up. I don't have a date on this one yet, so just be on the lookout for it. I'll be posting that information sometime within the next couple of days. So this is what this one's going to be a really fun one. I will be providing stencils for uh, main little bear there, and probably these guys in the background as well. So if you guys are interested in that, just uh, make sure you guys are paying attention to the posts. Like I said, I'll have this event up over the next couple of days. Okay. So um, so anyway, this is the next big one that's coming up. I don't know the dates on those, and then I will be providing stencils for Yoda. Uh, if you guys go to the event page, Yoda does have a stencil that you guys can use to trace out um, before we draw anything. But I am going to be teaching you guys how to draw everything step uh, by step, completely from scratch. Uh, we're going to be teaching you, I'm going to be teaching you how to draw from scratch as well, uh, as you guys know that I usually do. And this one will be from scratch, also. Okay. So anyway, that's what's coming up. So you guys know. Okay. All right. Let's see, so who's with us today? We've got about four minutes before we get started, and I didn't check to see if I got paint on my forehead. I probably do, like my wife said, but no big deal. It's all right, it's part of what happens when we, uh, when we paint. So anyway, folks, I, sp I see the first um, link from a spammer that just popped up. Please do avoid those links. They are not uh, anything associated with me. Just be aware that you know, if you do click on those, I don't know exactly where they're taking you, but I do know that they're trying to likely charge you guys for today's event or they're trying to steal your personal information so be careful do not click on those links that pop up in the comments section okay all right everyone very cool once again my name is jesse for all of you that are joining in a little bit later uh, we are going to get started right at three o'clock three o'clock west coast time that is three minutes away uh, so be ready for that we'll be talking about the supplies and stuff like that i've got a whole bunch of events that i'm going to be pasting posting about here pretty soon events that we'll be doing over the next um, couple of weeks over through January so again be on the lookout for those if you guys haven't yet please do like the page follow the page so that you guys get all the notifications I know we're gonna have a bunch of new people on here today but basically my painting with Jesse Page is all about creating really fun and generally easy uh, painting events painting themes <clears throat> I teach you guys how to do everything from scratch step by step. Uh, usually I'll provide a stencil for the more complex piece, pieces of our paintings, like our birds here on the, on the canvas. Um, but uh, if, if you're new, you'll see as we go along, we're gonna, you're gonna see what we're talking about. Mandy, what's happening? Mandy Lynn Lakino from Ontario, Canada. What's happening, Canada? And I saw, let's see who's on here. Let's see who else is on here. Who's on here? Carol Eaton. How's it going? Oh, the, the goat. Carol Eaton likes the goat back here. Yeah, this is Vincent. Vincent Van Goat. We did this guy, I think, something like um, three months or so ago. Got another commercial I got to skip through. Get that out of here. I'm using Facebook. I'm sorry, I'm using YouTube to run uh, copyright free music because I can't uh, play anything that's copyrighted. Facebook will boot me off of the live feed so I got to use copyrighted music non-copyrighted music and of course there's commercials and stuff that I've got to skip through but anyway this is Vincent Van Gogh uh, we did this session about I want to say about three months ago if any of you guys are interested you can go find that uh, again under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page click on that live tab go back a few videos quite a few videos and you'll find Vincent I teach you guys how to draw him from scratch but I also uh, do provide a stencil if you guys are interested in that, you'll want to email me to get that, okay? But anyway, folks, we've got quite a few of you on right now. We've got about, we've got almost 500 devices, <clears throat> so that's a pretty large group. We're going to get started here in about one minute. We'll talk, we'll start talking about supplies and materials that I'm going to be using and that sort of thing. But anyway, don't forget, please say hello in the comments. I'm not going to be able to see every one of your comments pop up. Uh, especially towards the beginning, the comments fly by really quickly, so that so I probably won't see everything that you guys are saying, but I will do my best. Um, Julie, how's it going from Louisiana? What's up? Julie Chiasson, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mandy Lynn Lakino, what's happening? Let's see who else is on here. Who else is on here? Phyllis Pendergrass, 
says, I guess somebody must have asked what size canvas I use. I generally use for these larger paintings, like today's, I use a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Uh, for, my, for my younger groups, uh, more kid-centric paintings that I, like the ones I showed you earlier, I use an 11 by 14 or an 8 by 10. Okay, but these larger ones are 16 by 20. You can use pretty much any size that you'd like. You can, uh, you know, customize the piece to taste. So whatever size you use, you're okay. You just have to make adjustments. Um, adjustments with what's inside the canvas, right? Smaller birds, for example. If you were going to reproduce this on a smaller canvas, you'd probably be using smaller birds, smaller trees, and that kind of stuff. So, it, so anyway, pretty much any size that you um, that you uh, have is what you'll use. But anyway, folks, it is three o'clock, so let's get going. All right, everyone, my name is Jesse. I just want to thank every one of you that is on here today. Uh, I want to welcome you guys. I also want to say Happy New Year 2021. This is our first painting event for the year. We're going to have a whole bunch more coming up throughout the entire year. So please, if you don't already, make sure you follow the page. Make sure you like it so that you get all the notifications that come up as I post them, okay? Uh, earlier I showed, if you were not here a few minutes ago, I, post, I showed a few of the upcoming events. I'll show those again once we get started. So, uh, so we do have about four events, three events currently scheduled. I'll be adding one more to the calendar over the next day or so, uh, but there will be a lot more coming throughout January and then of course into February and stuff. So again, be on the lookout for those. Anyway, what's happening, Rebecca Martinez Tovar? How's it going? I, you didn't, I can't see where you're from. I think you put down greetings from and then, and then probably, oh, from Texas. There you go, fantastic. Karen Shoemaker also from Texas. What's happening, Texas? Uh, so anyway, folks, all right, what are we doing today? Well, we're gonna be painting this awesome cardinal winter piece. We're gonna be doing everything on here from scratch. That means I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to draw everything that's on here. I know quite a few of you are gonna be using the stencils that I provided for the birds, and that is absolutely perfectly fine. <clears throat> of course, for those of you that wanna challenge yourselves, the drawing piece of it, we'll be going through that step by step. And of course, that's a little bit more uh, difficult, but don't worry about it. I, I think I have a pretty good way of teaching drawing, especially, especially if you're a newer person to drawing. So uh, as long as you follow along with me step by step, you're going to be okay. In just a few minutes, once we get started, I do come around to the front. I bring the camera in close so that you only see my, my two canvases, the original canvas, and then the, the new canvas that I'm going to be working on is going to be right next to it. Okay, that's all you're going to see on camera. It makes it easier for you guys to see everything that I do on the canvas. So I do a step, and then you guys, I give you guys a little time to do that step on your canvas. Okay, so again, I do one step on my canvas, then you guys do a step. I do a step, then you guys do a step. In between those steps, as you guys are doing your part, I'm going through the comments section, uh, answering questions, saying hello to all the people who are saying hello, in the, you know, saying hello and letting me know, whoops, Got my other phone ringing over here. Let me turn that down. All right, sorry about that. But anyhow, so there will be plenty of time in between to ask questions. Please do ask me questions, especially if you're newer. I absolutely understand that you know, you're, you're, you're gonna be going, hey, what's this about, what's that, or why are you doing this? Please ask those questions in the comments. For those of you that know the answer to some of these people's questions, please feel free to answer, especially if you've been painting along with me for quite some time. Uh, you guys know the answer to a lot of these questions, so if you can help somebody out, please do so. Like I said, I don't always get to see every single question that comes up, okay? All right, supplies. I'm going to be using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Basically, it's the same size as this here, okay? You guys can paint on whatever surface you have, whether it's wood, construction paper, uh, I don't know, whatever you might have, regular paper, as long as it takes whatever medium you're going to be using to paint with or color with, that's entirely up to you. The colors that I'm going to be using light blue for the background. I actually mix a little bit of regular regular blue, some basic green, and a lot of white to create kind of a, a light, slight teal, light blue color for that background. Whatever color you want to use is up to you. You can change anything up on this piece um, that you'd like. So anyhow, I'll be using light blue, white, uh, perhaps a little bit of brown, black, yellow, uh, orange, and I don't have the orange up here, but those are those are primarily the colors that I'll be using. Again, again, light blue, white, black, brown, orange, red, and then if you see anything else on here that I missed, um, oh, why, why do we get so many commercials on this today? Sorry about that. Let me get rid of that. 
This feed has a bunch of commercials I didn't, first time I'm using it. So anyhow, uh, then we've got some brushes. We'll be talking about the brushes here in just a little bit. When I flip around and we, we get started, I will talk about the brushes. The very first brush that I'm going to be using, however, oops, give me, let me grab a paper towel. Paper towel is very important. You guys want to make sure you have some of these handy. But the very first uh, brush that we're going to be working with, I'm going to be using this large two inch uh, basic synthetic bristle bl uh, brush. This is to cover my entire background. Okay, so that's the first brush I'm going to be using. Your largest brush size is probably what you'll want. Then I will also be using, you guys saw my paper, paper towel roll. You do want to, want, want to have one of those handy. Messes do happen. But the other thing you're going to want to do is have a blow dryer handy. If you don't have one, it's not that big of a deal, but this will help me dry the background more quickly. And then, of course, you want something to draw with. You can have a pencil with an eraser, chalk. I'm going to be experimenting today with these watercolored pencils. I've tried these a couple of times, and they work pretty well. I'll be uh, using these to draw uh, when we get to that point. Okay? But all right, guys, it is 3.06 on the West Coast. Let's get going. So let me jump over to the front here. I'm going to bring my, my setup around. You guys want to start getting ready. Um, I'm going to be mixing the colors for the background here in just a moment. You guys can do that at the same time. If you're using the same color as I am, like I said, my background is going to be that light blue tealish color that's currently on the canvas. So I'll show you guys how to mix that. I'm going to be using white a little bit of blue, lots of white, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of green to create kind of a, I know it's a little difficult to tell, it looks like it's mainly light blue, but there is a slight teal effect that's going on there. Um, again, though, whatever color you want to use, it's, it's perfectly fine. If you're just using a light blue for yours, that's perfectly okay. Maybe you're switching yours to a, a green or a, give me a sec, folks. Sorry about that. One minute, one minute. All right, turn that off. I thought I turned it off a moment ago, but this time I turned it off. Okay, like I said, the background color is what we're gonna start with, and we are gonna paint the entire background one color. So we're gonna start with the background all at one shot. We're gonna paint everything this color that's in this background, yes, the Birch trees are white. I totally get that. Some people might, might ask, well, why would you paint everything blue if you can just turn around and paint white right over it, over some of it? The subtleties that come through the paint, so the white paint is rather transparent, so I can still see a little tiny bit of the colors underneath, and so that creates a subtlety that's pretty cool, um, a variation in hues on those trees that I like. You don't have to color in the entire background if you didn't want to. You could simply draw out your trees and then color around them but if you're joining me today would like to do exactly what i'm going to be doing well that's what we start with okay give me a sec let me look at my feed here i'm about to bring my camera a little bit closer bear with me one sec just trying to get the best shot we can all right Wanda Jean, what's happening? Peggy Atkins, Holloway. How are you from Indiana? Carol Eaton, happy new year to you. Again, folks, be careful with the scammers that are posting links in those comment section. You guys want to avoid those altogether. All right, guys, so here we go. We're going to start with the background first. Again, I'm going to be painting the entire background this light blue teal color. I've got a whole bunch of white on my plate here. So this is an old plate that's got some old paint stuck to it, dried paint on it. Basically what I've laid out on this is some white, some green, some blue, okay, and then red and black. Those are primarily the colors that I'm going to be using, uh, but there are other colors that I'm going to be mixing in uh, or throwing on here. For now, though, this is what we can start with. I've got a second plate. The way I do this, usually my mixes Excuse me one sec. My mixes will happen on a second plate. I'm trying to recycle plates. I try to use them often so I don't make as much waste. But what I'm going to do, so this is an extra plate that I've got. 
I'm going to take my big brush. I'm going to scoop up a bunch of this white. I'm just going to transfer it over to my plate. Now, I want a lot of paint because I'm going to be covering up my entire background. Okay? Lots and lots of paint. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the green with the other part of my brush. So, dip some, dip one corner into the blue, brought it over, put it right over the white, grab some green, and I do the same thing. Okay? Uh, I introduce the blue and the green a little bit at a time. Let me move my light over so that I'm not blocking it and getting a giant shadow on the screen there or on my canvas. So there we go. Now that color is a little too light, so now I'm going to take a little bit more blue. So again, you introduce the blue and the green a little bit at a time. Okay. Okay, just grab a little bit more blue, a little bit more green, and there we go. I slowly introduce these colors till I get the color that I want. Now everyone's background is going to look a little different. Even if you're trying to match this color, there's going to be a subtle difference between yours and mine, or yours and your neighbor, or whoever it is that you might be painting with. So take your time, create the color that you want. Once you've got that color, so I just grabbed a little bit more blue, there we go. Once you've got the color that you want, you can go ahead and start spreading it onto that canvas. All right. up a really large area of my plate no big deal there we go we're getting there almost there okay, I'm throwing a little bit more green now so I just keep dipping my brush into the paint till I grab enough to make the color there we go that's about it I think this one's gonna be a little bit lighter but I'm okay with that once I've got my color I'm gonna take my plate Move it over, under, I put it underneath my canvas, and here we go. What I like to do is when I start to brush on the background for this particular painting, I'm going to go up and down, left to right, or right to left, doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm over on the left-hand side. I'm usually right in front of the canvas, right? But for doesn't really matter which side I start on. I just go from one side to the other. I like these long horizontal brush strokes because it creates a nice, even, smooth uh, finish. You don't need to, you can have short uh, vertical ones like this if you want, you can crisscross if you want, but these long brush strokes create a nice smooth finish that I want to have for this particular painting. My trees are long and horizontal, or vertical, sorry. Uh, what did I say, horizontal? These long vertical brush strokes. My trees are long and vertical, and I'm creating that feel to my, I'm giving that feel to my painting right from the get-go. This long, these long vertical brush strokes will help do that. It's really subtle, but there is a nice little difference that you can detect when you're all done with your painting. probably going to be painting for about two hours and 45 minutes today. Might seem like a long time, but time will fly. If you uh, can't paint that long, don't worry about it. Stick around for as long as you can, paint for as long as you can. And if you've got to get going, you got to, that's something else you got to do, go ahead and uh, you can always come back. You know, leave when you have to, but you can always come back and continue with the recorded version of this session. When this is all done, I will press save on the video and it gets uh, stored on the live tab of the main painting with Jesse Page. So again, if you can't finish with us today or maybe you simply can't paint today, you're just kind of you're coming on, checking out what we're doing, but you want to paint this, you just can't do it right now, you can come back and do this later.
tomorrow, next day. I'll have a video for at least two weeks, maybe longer, maybe through the end of the month. We'll see, but at least two weeks. So if you guys want to come back and do it later, you can. All right. You guys noticed over here on the, on the right side, I was using these short little horizontal brush strokes just to kind of fill in all the white areas that I, that I couldn't get to. And now I can go back and start brushing, go back to the long vertical brush strokes that I was using at the beginning. All right. There we go. Cool. I like that. Again, it's all the way from top to bottom. I'm missing a little part down here. And then I do like to paint my edges. I'll show you guys on the original what, what I mean by that. So the edges of my painting. Okay, now I'm, I'm matching. Sometimes I'll do this where I match what's on the front and touches the edge. I'll simply overlap it to the other side. Like this branch comes around over here. I didn't do it to the bottom. I didn't paint the bottom, but I could have gone down here and uh, wrap the trees around and then painted blue wherever this blue is wherever the blue touches the edge I would paint that area blue okay over here I did paint white and then over on the top I did the same thing the trees overlapped right so white where the trees are and light blue where the uh, sky is but up to you you can also you can leave them blank you don't have to paint the edges if you don't want or you can paint them all one color choice is yours okay well let me uh so I am going to paint the edges probably all one color. I'm not going to get too picky with today's piece, but there are options to that. There's no wrong or right. Okay, you guys do what you want. So what I am going to do is I'm going to switch around. I'm going to go ahead and simply do everything all the same light bluish that I've got on the front. We'll start with that. And if I decide I want to overlap my trees or wrap my trees around to the edges, we'll see about that. Because I'm painting on an easel, I don't do the very bottom edge, meaning underneath down here. I don't do this part here because it will stick to the easel. Okay, if you're painting on a table and you are painting on a canvas, then you can go ahead and do it, no big deal. The only thing you have to watch out for is you might get paint on your lap, right? Or on your chest if you, uh, if you don't have an apron on. All right, whenever I'm not using a brush, all of my brushes are sitting in a water cup. Okay, I'm painting with acrylic paint. In, fact, in case I haven't mentioned it yet, I think most of you guys already know uh, this description of the video and everything of the event talked about acrylic paint that's what I'm using I've got a water cup here I've got all my brushes sitting here inside of it and my brushes just kind of sit there in between steps whenever I'm done with the brush it goes right back into that cup so my big brush goes right in there okay now I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to get all caught up with this step let me take a look at the comments so I'm in the comment se uh, section here. I'm monitoring my, my feed like I, like I said I would. If you guys have questions, etc., etc., please put them down in the comments. I see a... All right, let's see. What's happening, Don Penny, Gene Hill? I've got a 16 by 20 inch canvas, okay? What's happening, Gloria Marie? Piali Sarkar, how's it going from Richmond, Virginia? Gloria, yeah, they're, they are cardinals. We got all the red ones are males. These lighter colored ones are females. Now, interesting fact, I'm not going to pretend I knew. Before I, before I, started on the painting I saw some of the different colored cardinals and I kind of assumed that they were you know one was female one was was male but I didn't really pay too much attention 
I created the original with red cardinals all throughout. And when I posted a sneak peek of what I was doing, a few people mentioned, hey, I wish you would have done a female as well. You know, all these cardinal paintings all the time. They rarely ever post one with a female in it. And I was like, ah, okay. So I went, I looked really quickly, I researched, and sure enough, all the, uh, the more olive or kind of a light brown colored ones, and it looks like they have slightly varying colors, uh, are females. So I went ahead and changed it so that this one's a female, this one way back here is a female. Uh, so we got at least a couple of females in the mix, okay? But that's what, that's what those are. Those are definitely cardinals. So, uh, I'm sorry, those are, that's female and we got a male cardinal. The red ones are, are males. Okay, in case anybody didn't know. Like I said, it was something new to me, so. All right. So the acrylic paints that I use, for those of you that might be interested in knowing the brand, and we're gonna, we're gonna continue painting here in just a moment, but the, the main paints that I usually use, the brand that I like to use the most, maybe not like to use the most, but the brand that I use the most is Artist Loft from uh, Michaels. I, I get those from Michaels, pretty basic, pretty basic brand right here, right there. Also, um, whoops, let's see. There's this one that is Apple Barrel. And I picked that up at Walmart, believe it or not, Walmart has some decent uh, art supplies. Especially since COVID started, they upped, their, they upped their art supply game. But all right, everyone, so here's what I'm going to do. To speed up the drying process, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the blow dryer here in just a moment. So give me one sec. Like I said, we take our time with these projects, especially at the beginning, things are a little slow, but we do pick up, we, we will pick up as we get start going along. So I'm taking my blow dryer and I'm gonna go through here. Okay, all you really need is that it's dry or close, almost completely dry to the touch, right? You kind of do this and it feels dry. We're gonna be doing a little drawing here in just a bit. So, uh, what, depending where you are, if you're in a more, uh, in a warmer area, you're, you're gonna, your acrylic paint, if you're working with acrylic paint, will dry much more quickly than if you're in a, in a colder area or more humid area. Okay, so if you got a blow dryer, go ahead and dry that. What we're gonna do here in just a moment, we're gonna actually start with our drawing drawing of the trees in the background. Now we're gonna draw the two trees uh, on the edges, this little skinny one here, and we're gonna draw this one here, okay? We're not going to draw this one just yet because that's in the background behind this bird here. We're gonna draw this tree, we're gonna draw this tree, and we're gonna draw this branch that comes out, okay? Then after that, we're gonna go go ahead and actually we're gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this one until we've drawn this bird in, okay? so. Grab your pencils, grab whatever it is that you're going to be drawing with. So I'm going to experiment a little bit. I want you guys at home to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to be drawing with this dark watercolored pencil. Okay, hopefully you guys can all see what I'm doing. If not, I'll switch over to a regular pencil and we'll see. Um, you should be able to see it against that light background. Now. What I always recommend, whatever you're drawing with, you want to do really light lines, especially when you're first creating the sketch, whenever you're first starting to draw, okay? Uh, the lighter the line, the easier it is to erase them from the canvas or paper or whatever it is that you're doing this on if you make a mistake or if you need to make a correction of some type, okay? So again, really lightly. Now, I'm going to make my lines a little darker than I normally would so that you guys can see this. I'm going to start start with this tree over here, and this tree is approximately on my 16 by 20 inch canvas. is about It's about maybe two and a half, three inches from the edge. So right about right here, I'm just going to make a little mark. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, nothing. You know, it's not, it's not anything super intricate. Just a nice little line, and all that is is a mark of where this edge of my tree is going to be. Now. Your tree can be straight all the way down or it could get slightly wider as it goes down to the base. Birch trees are generally, from what I've seen anyway, 
Uh, and I've seen some in you know, real life from every once in a while we'll see some birch trees, but um, they're pretty narrow, but they do slightly get wider towards the base, right? Um, anyway, if you what you don't want to have is a tree that's wider at the top and gets narrower at the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is maybe right over here. So if this tree is this wide down in here, I'm just going to make it a little slightly wider, just marking off a little step down there or a little mark a little line down here towards the bottom edge of my canvas okay now i'm going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect that i bring this down now there's a big branch right here in the center right so not quite at the middle slightly lower than middle we got this big branch right here and i'm just going to kind of bring this out a little bit in a moment i'm going to darken this up i know it's a little hard for you guys to see but you guys will get a chance to see what i'm doing a little bit better here in just a moment once i've got my lines dialed in i'll darken them up so i've got a line that comes down from here stops about a little lower than halfway down comes out that there is the top edge of this branch i'm gonna come down maybe about an inch and a half two inches okay and now from there continue on to the bottom okay so let me darken all of this up all right there we go so this is this tr this here is all of this tree minus the branch. Okay, this long branch is going to be coming out, but I did start it off. Okay, so let's work on that for a little bit. Like I said, I'm just darkening these up, darkening these up a bit so it's easier for you guys at home to see this. But you guys want to maintain really light lines all the way through. Okay, and that's what that looks like up close. From the bottom all the way to the top okay while you guys are working on that I'm gonna see if I can cue up some music that doesn't have as many commercials Try this music scene here. See what see what happens. Stacy, I cannot play any music that's copyrighted. It has to be non-copyright music, unfortunately. It's it's uh, no fun, but or not as much fun anyway. Okay, checking out the comment section. See what we got. Remember, guys, say hello in the comment section. Things have slowed down quite a bit. There aren't as many comments coming through right now. I've queued up what's called the best non-copyrighted music on the internet. At least that's what the feed says. Not sure that it's true, right? <clears throat> what's happening, Bridget? D. Bosco, how's it going? Susan, Elisa, what's happening? Absolutely, Deborah. You can sell your painting if you want. All right, folks, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this tree now. We're going to start to pick things up a little bit. Okay, we don't want to be here all the rest of the day. We're going to start with this little skinny one right here. Now, a couple of things to note. Uh, obviously, besides the fact that it's really skinny, it comes in from the edge of my canvas a little bit. So on my 16 by 20 inch canvas, this is about an inch in. I'm just going to mark off. Kind of like what I did with the other one, just mark off a little point here at the top. I'll do the same thing towards the bottom, and the bottom can be a little bit closer, just a slight bit closer to the edge, because it will be a little bit wider down here than it is at the top. If yours are perfectly straight and narrow, all you know, one size all the way from top to bottom, that's okay too. 
Once I've got my marks in place, I just go right on through. Remember, light pencil lines to begin with and then darken them up as you go. This is a little tricky because I'm over to the right, to the left hand side of my canvas. My perspective's a little off, but we're gonna work with it. I use my hand, this is all dry. I place my drawing hand, my palm, right up against the canvas, it stabilizes my hand, and here I go. And you guys notice, I do this a few times. I don't, my first line doesn't have to be perfect. I just, I can overlap and overlap till I get the lines that I want. Once I got the, have the lines that I want, then I can go in there and darken things up. The trees do not have to be perfectly straight, right? They, in nature, nothing is straight. So if there are some slight variations as you go down, curve where the tree curves out or curves in a little tiny bit, it's okay. Don't need perfectly straight trees all the way from top to bottom, right? Then I'm gonna come in a little bit and then I can, I do the same thing. This tree is approximately an inch and a quarter in width on this canvas. If it's little, yours is bigger, or it's narrower, it's not going to make a big difference. Okay. Now, there is going to be a big branch that comes across and overlaps, actually covers some of this over here, but I'm not worried about that. All the paint that we apply later is going to cover that. Once you've got your second tree, you are going to take this branch and you're going to come across <clears throat> all the way out to the edge from right here. We're just going to do, we're going to do this. Okay. Then... The other part of our other branch, we're just gonna bring that over and all the way out. If I wanted to, I'd come in here and erase this. It's not necessary. I'm gonna be covering it up with paint, right? All this is gonna be covered up with paint. So, but just to show you guys that you can erase. Now this is water colored pencils. So there we go, nice and easy. I don't wanna to brush too hard. So I don't remove that blue paint that's on the background. I did take off a little tiny bit of it, but again, because this is all going to be painted over, and that's not that big of a deal. So work on that for a moment. Like I mentioned, we're not going to be doing this big, this tree that's behind the red bird until after we have the bird in place. Okay, so work on that for just a little bit. Let me give you guys a close up. Here's what I got. I'm gonna go ahead and darken these guys up. I notice on my feed that they're not that, whoops, switched, switched watercolored pencils. I went to the red one. Remember to keep your drawing lines really light. <clears throat> Makes it easy to make corrections. Okay, there we go. You guys got about 30 seconds. Hi, Paulette from Deer Lake, Newfoundland. How's it going, Paulette? Thank you for being here. Naomi Palmer LaRue. Yep, this will be available to view later on. Simply come back to Facebook. Uh, you go to the live tab on my main painting with Jesse Page, and you will see the video there. I've got about 60 videos there from past sessions. So if you guys are interested in checking those out, those live there, at least in the meantime, uh, they live there under that live tab. Okay, again, Painting with Jesse, go to the top. There's a little section that says live, click on that, and you'll see all the past videos. Okay, what's happening, Hannah, how are you? Terry Lynn Wilson Noel, Badger, Newfoundland. How's it going? Then Marla Dalt from Kingsville, Kingsville, Ontario. Awesome. Okay, folks, so let's talk about what we're going to be doing next. We're going to be drawing these two birds. Okay, again, I know a bunch of you guys are using the stencil. All you're going to do right now uh, is do the traces. And your female bird could be over here, your male bird could be on the other side. It's up to you guys where you place them. Okay, I don't, uh, you know, uh, get, get as creative as you want. Whatever changes you want to make to the original piece, feel free to do so. Okay, this is your painting. I want you guys happy with it. I'm just here to guide you guys along to, in recreating something similar to this if that's what you want. Okay, so in a moment, I'm going to turn this canvas slightly at an angle towards me so I get, can get a better view of uh, the far the bird on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing her. Okay, for those of you that have your stencils, you're going to place them and trace them out. And then, of course, 
when you see me drawing something that's on the inside, that's your cue to draw that as well. Okay, you guys have a little bit of an advantage uh, because you guys have pretty much the exact birds as far as the outlines are concerned as what I've got on here. Uh, if you guys are working by yourselves, it's a little trickier to trace, but you can, you know, simply place your canvas down on the table, put your stencil on top and trace it out. And if you're working with, if, if you're painting with somebody there next to you, maybe you guys want to work in pairs when you do that. Okay, but anyway. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of drawing. I'm turning both my canvases slightly towards me because this is going to be a little bit of an intricate drawing. A little detail. I want to be able to make sure that I've got the right angle on these guys. So bear with me a moment. You won't be missing much. I will turn the canvas back towards you whenever I feel like I need to do that. But we're going to get right into the drawing. Now I'm going to move the camera over a little bit to the left as well and get a little, bit, a little bit of a close-up on what I'm going to be drawing. Okay, let's make sure that that little female bird is right on the edge of the camera. All right, and the focus is right there because that's where we're going to start. All right, guys, take a breath, relax a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of fun here with this drawing. Okay, first thing that I want you guys to look at. Elizabeth, yep. Elizabeth, and I didn't catch the rest of your name, it kind of passed by my screen kind of quickly. I am going to be doing some Blue Jays, a Blue Jay painting here next month, so be on the lookout for that, okay? Again, if you guys haven't yet, please make sure you're following the page so you guys get all of the alerts that uh, anytime I post something new, you guys get all the alerts, but I am definitely going to be doing a Blue Jay painting. I've had a few requests for that. All right, so let's take a look at our female bird. We're going to start with the body. It's kind of a nice little round uh, section down here right so that's the main focus as far as the uh the majority of the bird is is just kind of a round uh lower lower part so what we can do is this i'm simply again keep your keep your lines nice and light now i'm going to draw a nice little edge right here kind of a rounded edge you want to keep your lines light so you can erase them if you have to now this bird on the original is approximately three and a half inches or so. So I can just kind of do that. Also want to draw the outer edge. Okay. So there's the width of my bird. Okay. And, and the main part of the body is basically kind of a circle. Watch how I'm holding my pencil. I don't need to be super precise. I'm just kind of lightly coming in here. And I'm going to be drawing a nice little circle. Circle-ish. Okay. And again, this is about this in here. Okay, so take a moment to draw this. And we'll move on to that next step. Don't worry about making your circle, circle perfect. That's not a perfect circle. Okay. That's right. Stencils are optional. I was getting a lot of commercials on these feeds. I'm not sure. I've used these before and I don't remember hearing as many, getting as many commercials. So don't know what's happening. It's all good. Let me turn it up a little bit. Okay. So what's the top part of our bird? Oh, it's a giant. It's a fairly large triangle. Basic triangle shape. Okay. So that's what we're going to start with. We'll start towards the front. Right over here on this edge. Okay, right over here, it's going to draw a nice triangle, goes up a little bit, right? This is just kind of the general shape without the beak of the front part of our bird's head, okay? Then the back part is slightly curved, so when we, we'll start over here somewhere towards the back of our circle. We're going to start bringing that up. And when you get towards the top, simply scoop it back and give yourself, your little bird, a few little feathers that kind of pop off. Again, I'm using the canvas. I place my hand right up here. Now for this more precise, this precision work, I get a little closer to the tip. I get better control of the pencil that way. But other than that, for the most part, nice and loose, okay? As 
Sulin Yee Hartness, how's it going? Memphis, Tennessee. You got it. My pleasure. For those of you that plan on, plan on painting this later and you'd like those stencils, you don't want to do this freehand, you can send me an email at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. I'll get those over to you. Also in the, uh, in the event, the feed, the comment section of the event page, not the live feed, but the, the discussion board. I posted the stencils there. Okay. All right. So we got the general shape, all of the outline of our bird. Okay, for those of you that are using the stencil, what you're going to want, let me erase this in here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit. I got a paper towel with a little bit of just a light, a little bit of uh, water on here. This will also work if you're working with pencil. A little, just a dab of water on here. And I just go through and lightly touch over that and it erases here. For those of you with the stencil, you do want to come in here where this curved part comes in and connects to your top part of the bird. You can kind of tell where the two sections kind of connect. You just want to take a little line and bring that in a little tiny bit like that. I'm just going to darken things up a little bit now that I've got the general shape that I want to make it easier for you guys at home to see this. Okay, so we got this in here. Also, what I want you guys to do, all of you that don't have the stencil over here on the back. So we got the circle part in here. We're going to come over here. This edge in here, that's the inside of the feather right in here. So right over here, we're just going to take, we're going to add a little feather to the outside, a little wing, not the feather, but the wing. And that just comes on up. Don't overthink it, folks. There's nothing fancy about this. Simply mimic what I'm doing. If your birds look a little different than mine, don't worry. Promise you that everybody that's doing freehand, even the ones that, are, that have stencils, everyone's birds are going to look a little different. So again, all I did was, this was the inside of the circle. This is the edge of the original circle that we created. I came out a little bit, starting here at the bottom, drew a line that goes back a bit, comes back up and connected it. Connected that line up here towards the top. What I created was this little wing right here. And then I just erased a little off the top nothing fancy so let's look at the face what do we got with the face we're going to start with that beak okay a little short beak where this line comes in right in here a little sideways triangle okay a little sideways triangle right there okay now right in here I'm going to give you guys a moment here a little, and a little bit to catch up. And I'm going a little bit on the fast side. I'm going to bring a little line down. So i got like the top part of my triangle. And I've got a line that comes down, slightly angled. I'm going to bring a line down, straight down, almost, almost straight down. And then I'm going to connect that to the bottom of the beak. We take our time with everything here, folks, especially when we're drawing. Once we start to paint, things will pick up a little bit more quickly. Hopefully you guys are all relaxing, having a good time with this. Don't stress about the process. You know, enjoy it. Valerie, Valerie Brianton from Miramichi, New Brunswick. How's it going? Marlene Biros from Pennsylvania. What's happening, happening, Marlene? Hi, Amy. You know, you know, how to, you know how this works. You'll catch it later, just like you're saying. What's up, Sue Kripe? From Iowa, what's happening, Sue? Welcome back, welcome back, Amy. Bunch of uh, return painters, which is fantastic. Love you guys coming back. Shannon Barks from Canada, what's happening? Kristen Mathias or Mathias from Windsor, Ontario, welcome. Linda Gentry Guest from Winston, Georgia. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. Okay, so here's our beak. Now I don't have to erase this line that's in here, the one that, the little lines that are on the inside that originally were for the outer edge of the bird. We're not gonna erase those, we're just gonna paint right over that. But I am gonna create this little black area around the face. So all it really is is a kind of a shape that follows the shape of the outside of the beak. Comes up. And this is a general, not 
This isn't anything super precise. Don't worry if your shape is a little different than mine. Okay, all of this in there is going to be black. There's a nice little close-up of it. Don't forget that the, with the recorded version of this, you'll be able to pause and jump forward, jump back. For those of you that want to come back to it, you can always do this as many times as you want. Okay, little right here over here, we have a little eye. Okay. <clears throat> Once you have your little eye, that's pretty much all we need for this bird. Maybe outline where the two, the top and the bottom of the beak separate, but we're gonna be doing that with paint later, so don't worry about that too much. But there's the general outline of our bird. Okay, we don't need to add feathers or anything like that. That all comes when we add paint. All right, give you guys one minute. Then we're going to be doing our male bird over here. Okay, so that's what's next. Once again, I want to wish everyone a happy 2020. Thank you all for being here in this first event of 2021. Sorry, did I say happy 2020? Happy 2021. Happy New Year. Yeah, we don't want to be stuck in 2020. That was a crazy year. Happy New Year. Happy 2021 to all of you. Uh, this is the first painting event here in 2021 for Painting with Jesse. And uh, there's many, many more to come. Over the next few weeks, I've got a few kid-centric events. But this is actually more of, all, more of an all-ages. This is more of an all-ages. It's a little complicated. Uh, a little bit of a complicated piece, but we're going to be doing Baby Yoda or Grogu. For those of you who know him as Grogu, for those of you that are Mandalorian fans out there. Next Tuesday, I believe, is what when we're doing this one. This is already on the event page. If you guys go to the event tab on the main Painting with Jesse page, you'll get all the details for this. There's, there is a stencil that I've provided. It's in the discussion board. I'm going to be teaching this from scratch, <clears throat> completely from scratch. But for those of you who want a stencil, I have a pretty complete stencil for that. Okay, so that's next Tuesday. Make sure that you guys go look for that <clears throat> if you want to join in with that. The week after, we're doing Toothless from um, How to Train Your Dragon, drawing it from scratch. I don't know that I'm going to provide a stencil for this one yet. I haven't decided. More than likely, I will. But the event for this one's also up. And then I think it's two weeks after that, <clears throat> we're doing, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw your own Among Us characters. Okay, so for those of you that are Among Us fans, a bunch of kids, kiddos out there that are huge Among Us fans. So I'll be teaching you guys how to draw this from scratch. You'll create your own Among Us fans, uh, your own Among Us characters. And then for those of you, I don't have a date on this one yet, but stay tuned. I'll have it up by tomorrow. We're doing this really cool, cute little polar bear piece um, with the Aurora, Aurora Borealis in the background. Okay, so for those of you that are interested in this, this one will be posted very soon. Okay, all the details on this. All right. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get to drawing <clears throat> our male bird over there. Let me pull the canvas out. A little bit so that I can get a better view of our bird over there. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So, kind of like what we did with the with our female bird, <clears throat> we want to look at the general shape. So the general shape of this bird, and we're starting with the torso, is a big oval. In here, you got a, a fairly large oval. It's more pronounced towards the front. The curvature is much more pronounced in the front than it is on the back. Okay, then down here, you've got generally, <clears throat> the general shape is a large either rectangle or triangle. So we're going to be connecting some geometric shapes here, and a little bit kind of like what we did with the female bird. Okay, then the top is also a triangle. Okay. There's a little more detail to, to this guy, a little more involved in drawing him. So just kind of, you know, do your best. <clears throat> but we are going to start with this body. So our bird, our big bird. And you can, 
If you wanted, this guy could be closer to her on your painting or you'd be further away, it's all up to you. But my bird is approximately, the front of it is about maybe five and a half, six inches from the edge. So about right here is where the front of my bird is. So I'll just mark off, again, nice and light, marking off this edge here. <clears throat> then I'm gonna come over and mark. So at the widest part, my bird is about three inches, about three inches. So mark the other side. Okay. Once I've got my two edges marked in, marked off, I'm going to go ahead and create my oval-ish shape for that body. Oval-ish. Or it might look maybe more, more like an eggplant, smushed on one side. Watch my hands, look how I'm holding my pencil. There's nothing fancy about this. I make a whole bunch of lines here. Correcting as I'm, with each circle, or with each line, each pass, I correct my shape a little bit more, okay? So that is the body without the head and no tail. Okay, let's so work on that for a moment. So we got about 506 devices on right now. There's quite a few of you that are painting today, that are drawing and painting along today. So I just want to tell you guys all, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Hope you're all enjoying this. I always enjoy painting with you guys. <clears throat> so I definitely appreciate you guys being here. Orisia Irene, that's right. The bear is pretty awesome, huh? Let me show you guys. Let me give you guys a little view of that little bear little polar bear in the front with his little family in the background. Okay, so again, this is coming up on the calendar. I'll be posting the information on this pretty soon. I don't have a date for it yet, but you'll see it either tonight or tomorrow. This will be posted, okay? So be on the lookout for this guy. I'll likely be providing a stencil for the bears. Okay, and then I'll teach you how to create an aurora borealis in your sky. I'll teach you everything on there from scratch. Okay, let's continue with our bird. So let's Go to the, to the tail feathers, just a couple of things I want to point out. It's narrower where it connects to the actual bird, then it's narrower and it gets wider at the bottom. So you can envision a rectangle, maybe the top part. We just kind of start off with a long tail, long line that goes like this. You can start on the other side as well, come out and then open it up a little bit so it's a little bit wider at the base. You can also envision that this is the base of a triangle that slowly gets narrower as you get further up and you, the bot, the top point gets lost under the feathers, right? That's another way to look at it. So rectangle, nice and white or wider at the bottom, flares out a little bit and then you can connect these. Now my feathers on my bird have a little bit of a separation in the middle there, so you don't have to have one on yours. There we go. Okay. Once you've got this in place, we're gonna do the head. We're gonna start with a nice little triangle. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys about a minute and just, just a moment, just starting my, the base of my triangle. There's the base of my triangle. That's this in here. Okay, obviously this is more of a curved shape to the top of it, but just to, guys, to give you the visual, this is a little bit more of a, of a we're gonna create a kind of a, the base of the triangle there. You got it, Susan. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of different types of paintings on here. So make sure you guys, if you haven't yet, if you're new to the page, and even if you've been painting with me for a little while, you may not be aware that on the main painting with Jesse page here on Facebook, there's a whole bunch of pre-recorded sessions. All the sessions that we've done over the past few months are there. Okay, so go take a look whenever you want. All right, so let's work on this head. I'm actually going to bring this line down a little bit. I think I started it a little bit too high, so grab my paper towel with a little bit of water on it. I don't have to erase everything on here perfectly. As long as I erase the majority of that, we're okay. But right in here, I'm gonna lower this down just a touch. So here's my triangle, the base of my triangle. That would be the bottom of the neck of our bird. And then here we go. One side of the triangle goes up. Okay, now 
The back side of the triangle can be a little bit more pronounced or a little bit curved. Okay. Whereas the front maybe is a little less so. Okay. Here at the top, what do we do? We just pull back to create the little feathers that stick out of the top. And then we bring that down. Take a little step back, look at the general shape of your bird, and then make, his, make your adjustments as needed. Okay? I'm gonna clean this up a little bit in here. And I'm just gonna bring this forward a little bit more. Drawing is about making little corrections as you go. People expect to create perfect lines on the very first touch, and that's actually rarely the case. Okay, and then unless you've got a whole bunch of experience, a whole lot of drawing experience, um, most of the time, actually even people with lots and lots and lots of experience, I've been drawing since I was a kid, you're gonna be racing as you go. So that's all part of it, okay? All right, there, we got the general shape of the outside of the bird. Let me go ahead and darken up the body, the lines for the body a little bit so it's easier for you all to see this. Got my tail. Right over the top, you've got this little feather that pops out. You can always create that with the paint once we start to paint. But if you want to add it, you can go ahead and add it here at the bottom. We need a beak. So it's a long sideways triangle with a curved edge at the top. Goes back into the face. So we got our triangle right there, but we're going to go past the edge a little bit and create the inside edge of that beak, okay? Right in there is in here. There you go, Penny. Oh, yes, the female tail. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> I like to forget little steps. I would have remember, I would have started painting this and would have been, oh wait, we need to add the female tail, which we can always add with the paint, but yes, female tail. Uh, depending on how wide you made your branch here at the base, oh, right, you know, right here underneath your female, you may only see a little bit of your tail or maybe you can see a lot more of your tail. It all depends on you and how wide you made that. But thank you so much for pointing that out to me. I am notorious for forgetting little steps. I think it's my trademark. So just the bottom here, I'm just going to have a little tiny bit of a section of the tail pop out. Okay, again, this is the little tail that connects to the top there. So you wanna kind of follow your angle, right? So if your angle comes in, what would that look like behind the branch and where would it come out underneath? And voila, it just pops out here at the bottom, okay? What's left over here? We got a little black area around the beak. It's gonna start about right here, right, right slightly above the beak, comes back a little bit. We don't have to worry about the eye for now, but it does pop out significantly away from the beak, curves back under, and then goes forward. Then of course we got our eye right up in here, a nice little circle. We don't have to add any detail to the eye, all that will come in later when we start to add paint. I am going to erase this line in here, this little line here at the top. I'll give you guys a close up here in just a bit. Okay, there's my male bird. See all these little smudges in there where I didn't do a complete erase job? When I removed lines and stuff, I'm not worried about that. All that's gonna get covered with paint. Okay, so don't get super specific. Tell your brain to relax a little bit. I know sometimes for some of us that are a little bit more perfectionist, stuff like that is kind of irritating. Wanna go in there and no, it's gotta be perfect. Don't stress about that. Tell your brain to relax a bit, take a little vacation. All right, 
I'm gonna give you guys about a minute to finish up your birds, make your little corrections. We're gonna be adding this tree in the background and then we're gonna start getting into the paint. We're not worried about drawing these little birds or anything like that for now. Everyone's, some of you may not even add those. Some of you may decide you don't wanna add those birds. Uh, maybe you just have a bunch of branches in the background, no birds, or maybe some of you are only putting in one bird in the background or, or who knows, maybe some of you are gonna put birds on every branch so you have seven, eight, nine, ten birds hanging out. Um, but it's all entirely up to you. This stuff here, we're going to lead towards, uh, closer to the, towards maybe the, the last third of our painting. We'll see. But for now, we're not drawing anything else other than this tree that's behind our male bird. Okay. So let me go ahead and straighten out my canvases while you guys finish up your little uh, details on your drawings down your sketches. And then let me pull my camera back a bit. Yeah, Penny, I, I feel you, Penny. I feel you. What's happening, Tina Bernie or Burn from Ohio? Actually, I think I pulled them, pulled my camera a little too far back. Let's uh, let's go forward a bit here. Don't want it, don't want it that far away. I want you guys all to be able to get a good look. Anita Chow or Anita Chu, how's it going? Sharon Fisher from Raleigh, North Carolina, says missed the beginning. Going to watch tomorrow. I'm so excited about this one. Absolutely, Sharon. Also, folks, I'm going to be asking you guys to share your paintings with me. Okay, for those of you that are new, those of you that have been painting for a while, you guys already know, send me pictures to my uh, messenger here on Painting with Jesse. Uh, take a picture of yourselves holding your paintings, or if you're painting in a group, take a picture of your group. Send me your paintings, your masterpieces uh, on messenger here on Painting with Jesse. For those of you that uh, are new, um, basically you want to send me a message. I, I mean, some people tell me that they have a hard time sending me a painting, a picture on the first message they send. So you might have to say like, Hey Jesse, just want to say hi and to send you my picture, press send on that message. And then right after that, you can send me, send me a picture. Okay. But anyway, send me pictures of your masterpieces. Here we go. Big branch behind our, our bird. Now where you put your, or sorry, the big tree back here in the, in the background. Where you put it doesn't really matter too much. So on my original, the, the tree is right about right here. But if your tree is over to the left, over to the right, it's up to you where you put it. Or maybe you don't have another, you don't have a, uh, a tree in the background behind our red bird. But I'll, be, I'll go right here. Earlier I marked off the top. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go right into this. Okay, just kind of, again, try to, let me, let me get over to the right a little bit. Looks like I'm a little bit crooked. Let's straighten that out. Again, I'm using my palm. I put it right up against the canvas. Okay, nice and skinny. Maybe it's a little wider than this one. Your choices though, if you want to make yours skinny or wider, all entirely up to you. Okay. Okay. And then, so let's see, if I follow this down like this, it pop out about over here. Then same thing over here, bring it down, comes over here. Let me turn the canvas towards me so that I can make corrections. Let's see. From time to time, take a little step back, analyze your drawing and say, hey, I need, I need to make a correction, a correction over there, a correction over here. There we go. Hi, Margaret. Margaret Hansen Russell from Calgary, Alberta. Awesome. 
says, I have tried Cardinals before and already this is, seems to be going much better. We take our time here. I know sometimes people, every once in a while, I get somebody telling me, hey, Jesse, your sessions take much too long. Uh, you know, but it's because we take our time with it. I want to make sure you guys understand. I want you guys to learn the process. Uh, these are little techniques that you can learn or you can always try on your own. But it is there is a learning process. Uh, I want you guys to get something out of this besides creating a, a nice little painting that you guys can hang up on your wall or give away as a gift. Okay, I want you guys to be able to learn it and actually create something really nice. Okay, which is why we take so long. But all right, here we go, folks. We are actually going to get into painting now. We're actually going to lay some white paint. Let me take a little step back real quick. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Like I said, I like to I like to forget things. So let me take a little step. I'm behind the camera now, analyzing my painting, my drawing, seeing where we are. Okay, cool. So what we are going to do is we're going to take some white, just white, and we're going to apply paint to our trees now. So grab some white unless you're doing different colored trees different types of trees it's all up to you you might want to you know maybe you're doing oak trees or who knows i'm not too familiar with exactly where cardinals live all the different places in the country that cardinals live in uh, in uh, north america and where else they're found in the world if they're found anywhere else but i'm assuming that there's different types of trees they're not just on birch trees I'm going to take, I've got this, uh, this uh, one inch brush, one inch synthetic flat brush, okay? Uh, when I talk about, when I describe my brushes, I usually describe them by size and shape. So it's easier for you guys to grab a brush that's similar. You guys just look over your brushes and go, oh, that one looks at about the right size. So this is about a one inch wide br uh, brush. It's synthetic bristles, okay? I just grab bunch of thick paint like this and I come right on over you can use a bigger brush if you've got it usually the safest thing to do is to outline first so I just kind of take and outline my tree first now white is transparent right acrylic paint is transparent so you, depending on your background color and how thin your layer of paint you're putting on your paint is going to be a little transparent and you're gonna be able to see some of your background color coming through don't worry about that on this step. Simply apply your layer of paint and we're gonna move on. We're gonna come back later once this layer is dried, as we're moving around, the previous layer is dry, we'll come back and do another layer over the top. That second layer is gonna make things a lot more intense, a lot brighter, a lot cleaner, sharper, etc., etc. So for now, simply worry about applying your, your layer, make it as even as you can, but don't sit there getting caught up on trying to make everything look exactly the same or exactly perfect. Okay, it isn't about that on this step. Okay, so about like that, if you were to look closely on mine, you could see some blue coming through, um, things are a little uneven, etc. All that gets fixed on a second layer. Sometimes we might require a third layer. If I wanted to, and I do, for this painting, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my tree around the top top edge so I just kind of do that and then I also come around my right side and paint that in also again this is optional you don't have to do this I'm not going to do it to the bottom the bottom is going to be all one color blue and I apply that at the end move kind of quickly through these steps here with me folks even if you're newer just kind of try to match my speed if you're comfortable with it if it's if I'm moving too fast for you you know, I get it. Um, do your best to keep up. You don't want to fall too far behind. But if you find yourself falling too far behind, uh, just remember that the recorded version will be available to for you to watch afterwards. Okay? All right. So now I'm going to take paint. In this case, I painted straight up and down. For my branch here, I could do the same. I could do this all the way across. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to br brush using long horizontal brush strokes. Now, here underneath your bird, just be careful, right? If you overlap your branch a little bit, just kind of go under your bird a bit. If you need to switch to a smaller brush because your branch is smaller, please do so. The bigger the brush, the more likely you are to go past your lines. There we go. 
Nothing to it. And again, long horizontal brush stroke because what I'm using keeps keeps the smirt of the surface a lot smoother. Birch trees tend to have a pretty smooth surface, so that'll help maintain that finished look. Finished smooth look at the end. Okay? There's that. I'm gonna go ahead and do my large tree here behind our male bird. Outline first. Now in this case, I'm using the skinny edge of my brush like that to, to uh, do my outlining. And then again, I'm holding it nice and loosely here towards the back of my brush. I don't need to be up close, up tight. Uh, I know sometimes, especially if we drink a lot of caffeine or if we have medical conditions, we shake a little bit more, right? Uh, but just do your best to relax. Uh, usually holding your brush towards the back of the handle creates more of a more of a relaxed feel to everything as opposed to when you're if you're painting like this the whole time up, you can get a little tight with your you know your your muscles in your hands and stuff like that so just just some tips everybody there's no right or wrong whatever you're comfortable with okay there we go I'm gonna finish our trees here in the moment. In a moment, then I'm gonna look at the comment section and give you guys a little time to catch up. When you overlap, when you go up to the edges of your lines that you created, whether you use pencil, chalk, or uh, whatever it is used, just simply go right up to the edge, try to cover them up, cover up those pencil lines. We are gonna be outlining our trees in black. You can also work with brown, and that'll help cover those up. But to minimize the amount of work that you have to do when you're doing your outlining, just try to cut just right up over the top. Paint right over the top. So I'm taking um, lots of requests for what people want to paint this year. And I have a big post that I painted up, that I posted up. I posted a few days ago, three or four days ago for uh, for what people want me to paint in February. Got a whole bunch of really cool ideas. Haven't gone through all of them. There's so many people that posted. But if you guys would like to chime in, please do so. I love to hear what you guys. I mean, I have a lot of ideas of what to paint, but there's only so many ideas and you know pop in my head. A lot of times I look at what you guys request. I'm like, oh, that would be awesome. So if you guys can, please, when you have a chance, go to that post. You'll find it near the top of the main painting with Jesse Page and chime in with your requests for January, okay? All right, folks, there's my first layer of paint. In this step, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna put it back in my water cup, okay? I do have a variety of other smaller brushes. I've got this half inch flat, okay? And then I've got a little tiny, got a couple little liner brushes in here. Those little liner brushes are these guys right here. Um, so these little pointy things. Now, normally I like to use a zero. The zeros are the really skinny ones with um, make really thin, thin lines that'll help with these guys in here. But if you don't have anything that small, I'll show you how you, as long as you got something small and you get pointy, I'll show you how to make those really fine lines when we get to that point. Okay, and then I have one that's right in between all of them. This is uh, a little quarter inch Again, I'm describing the width here, quarter inch flat brush. Okay, looks like that. But all right, work on that for, you guys got about a minute, and then we're moving on to adding some color into the birds. Okay, we're gonna start, we're gonna put some, a layer of color over our birds. So, Jerry Cook from, from Greer, South Carolina, will paint tomorrow. Fantastic, Jerry. That sounds good. Come on, Penny, don't be shy. You gotta send me your picture, no matter how it turns out. <laughs> All right, let's see. Squirrel, says Mar Margaret and Gregory. I'm, I'm assuming you're meaning you'd like for me to paint a squirrel. That'd be a cool one. Uh, we got some giraffes that are gonna be coming up. Uh, Sophia and Jennifer in McMurray, Alberta. What's happening, Sophia and Jennifer? Thank you for being here. Beverly Graft Hubert says, first time we're here, I have a new brush and I see hairs on my canvas. So, yes, there are some canvases or some brushes 
depending on the type of brush that you use, that will lose um, bristles. So let me show you. Let me show you the type of brush that I'm talking about that commonly does that. So this here is a brush. It's a little difficult for you to tell probably from a distance. This is a little number six, a little number six. And I'm trying to remember the type of brush this is. Uh, gosh, I, I sometimes forget the technical terms, but it's one of these horse hair. Looks like uh, looks like natural hair brushes. These guys tend to fall out very easily. These are good for create for some really cool effects, especially when you're when you're uh, blending and when you're creating things like clouds and stuff like that. These are really good for that. But this type of brush, this type of bristle, these fibers. The, the hairs come out very easily and they, they get into your paint. So I like, in general, in a general sense, I typically use the synthetic bristle brush type. Um, the Taclon, whether they're gold or white. Um, but synthetic bristle brushes are, are my choice. Yes, this type of brush, and there are others also that they lose bristles. And that can be a little bit of a headache. What you want to do is whenever you see a bristle, you can use the brush to lift it off, but what I usually do is I'll, t I'll take the back side of the brush and just try to pick it out, okay? Uh, that or you can use some tweezers, <clears throat> etc. okay? But yes, certain types of brushes will definitely have problems like that. Unicorn, Susan Elisa, we did a unicorn about a month and a half ago. And if I, when I have a moment, I'll look for it here in my studio. I'll, I'll try to show you what that looks like. It's more of a kid-centric one, but there are other unicorns that are coming up that are, that are a little more complex but all right everyone here we go <clears throat> now a couple of things our female bird even though it has it's kind of a light brown tan cream colored finish the layer the base layer underneath all of this is actually orange if you don't have orange but you have red and yellow you're going to mix those together and that's actually what i'm going to do i have some orange whoops I've got some orange, but I'm actually going to mix red and yellow instead to create my base layer for that female bird. I don't need a lot of red, but I'm going to be using this red for the male bird, so I might as well pour out enough for both. Okay, again, this is the first coat that's going to go on our bird, but we're going to start with the female bird. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, take a plate, and I'm all over the place with my plates. I've got, I'm grabbing whatever plate's in front of me when I'm doing this. Normally I have a couple of plates that I stick to, but for some reason today, not how it's working out. So I've got some red, I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this, I move it over to the side. Now I'm gonna take some yellow and put it right next to it. Now it doesn't require a whole lot of red to quickly make your yellow look orange, but you wanna create an orange, it's kind of a deep orange, and it can be a little swirly in color, it doesn't have to be perfectly even. Okay, so this color here, and it could be a little darker, it could be a little brighter, it doesn't really matter too much. But um, whatever color you come up with, it can be a little streaky and meaning uneven in tones. You can have some yellows and reds and oranges all popping through. But what I'm going to do is everything but the black part of my female bird is going to get covered in this. I outline first. And then again, same idea, this is all transparent colors. So, don't stress too much that you can see the background coming through. We're going to outline everything and then we color the inside. Work our way around our face, the black part of the, the uh, face. Work around the eye a little bit. Now fill it in. Now what, what I recommend is this, when you're doing the top part, when you're doing the head, brush downwards into kind of start creating the shape that those feathers are going to take. Okay, so you're kind of brushing downwards, smoothing out your paint with your brush strokes. When you get down towards the bottom, curve them a little bit. So I'm curving, using curved brush strokes to indicate the general shape that those feathers are going to take around the body of the bird. So like for example, back here, lots of curved brush strokes. Curve, curve, curve. Here towards the front, I can, they don't have to, the curve doesn't have to be as pronounced, or towards the middle, doesn't have to be as pronounced as it is towards the edges. 
the feathers around the edges, like the belly, are a little more curved than they are from our perspective than the ones in, than the ones in the middle. So again, brush strokes in the middle are a little straighter, but as, I, as you start to get over to either edge, curve out. Use curved brush strokes. You're already forming a shape. You're already giving a slight 3D or dimension to that to your bird. Okay. And then let's not forget down here, like I did earlier, the little feathers underneath the, the branch. And then little tufts at the top. Oh, I apologize. I didn't tell you which brush I'm using. I'm using my little quarter inch flat brush. Okay. And we're going to come up here. Now, technically, this is what you would call. Whoops. There we go. I just want to make sure I. There we go. Now, I can already see the difference between my original and the new one. This one's a little longer. No big deal. Okay, a little larger. The top of the head is. I can always fix that if I want by cleaning this up if it's too large. But, or I can also increase the size of the head and the rest of the body to, to um, make up for that. But this still works and is within what's reasonable for, uh, for the size of a bird. Okay, so in a moment we're gonna go through here and um, cover our male bird in a layer of red. Okay, we're not gonna leave it, we're not gonna do the details on the beak or the face or anything like that. We're gonna do that at the same time on both birds right after this next step, after we cover everything on our red bird in red. Waterfalls. <clears throat> yeah, waterfalls, those would be good. Something with a waterfall in it. Peggy Arsenault, it is my pleasure, my absolute pleasure. The galaxy, that'd be a good one. Tammy Hellman says, uh, a galaxy. Yeah, that would be a fun one. Sunsets, this is Cassie Nelson. The Blue Jays, for sure, Elizabeth. We're going to be doing some Blue Jays. Pretty sure, um, I'm pretty positive, let's say, that I'll be doing Blue Jays in, in February. Hannah Herrera says, I want to learn how to blend. Can you do sunsets? Absolutely, we can We can do some blending on uh, sunsets. Absolutely. Okay, same brush. I don't need to clean it up. My little quarter inch. <clears throat> brush that I was just using for this bird here. And again, don't forget, this is all transparent, right? I'm not too stressed about it. We're going to cover over that in that blend of, uh, it's kind of like a light tan color that we'll be using. I'll show you how to make that if you don't have something similar. So we're just going to take some red, come inside here. I'm going to outline. Yeah, there we go. Once we go, we've outlined everything, we go ahead and start brushing again the inside, adding paint to the inside, long brush strokes for that tail. And again, I paint in the direction of those feathers here in the towards the chest and belly area. My curve, my lines are a little more pronounced. And you notice I'm going back and forth on these, holding the brush towards the back of the handle again, nice and easy, smooth, relaxed. My red's going to be transparent, no big deal. As I get closer up here to the top edge, on top of the or back edge of the bird, my curved lines, my brush strokes are a little less pronounced. 
more pronounced towards the front, up here, up in here. What you can start to do is this, kind of forming a little bit of a curved brush stroke. You're already creating that shape where the feathers kind of form the top of the wing. Okay, so up in here, nice and curved, curved like this. Okay. Then, up in here on the head, just kind of long brush strokes following the shape of that head. Here at the top, you can just brush upwards. Okay, there we go. Again, don't get caught up on trying to make everything even, perfectly uniform, all exactly the same color. That's not gonna work on this step. Not with acrylic paint anyway. Okay, there we go. Take a little step back from time to time, look at your masterpiece from a distance so you can kind of make sure that you're, you know, in the general vicinity. Make corrections as needed when you step back a little bit of ways. Uh, it's easier to tell where it is that you need to make corrections, okay? If you're too close the whole time, you will miss things. It's easy to miss things. Okay, there we go. Give you guys a minute on that. So the red color, the red color that I'm using is a really basic red. Okay, so it's probably the most basic red you can find on any any um, acrylic paint. It's from Artist Loft. Okay, there's nothing fancy about it. Um, just plain red. There's no special name to this one. Just red. If you have a deeper red or a slightly brighter red, it's it'll work out regardless. Okay. All right, guys. I am looking at the comments section right now. Cindy Laney, yes. You can watch this video later from the beginning. Now the live session, and if, you're, if you're painting along with me right now, if you tried it maybe, you'll find that you can't pause or back up the video. As far as I know, unless something's changed with Facebook. But um, the recorded session, once, the, when, once this video is over, as soon as it's done, as soon as we're done with the session today, I simply press uh, save and the video is uh, saved to the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page. You'll find all the previous sessions there. Yeah, so, so as soon as today's done that this video will go up there as well. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We're going to take a little black. We're going to switch brushes now. I'm going to, I'm going to take my, um, little liner brush one of these little skinny ones okay i've got this little i got a few of these little guys close by all it is is a really pointy brush uh, good for detail work <clears throat> and i'm going to take now you could take some if you have orange you're going to use orange or if you if you made your orange like i did you can simply take that same color and um just make it so that's slight. it's a different color than your and actually, no, it doesn't not gonna matter too much because we're going to cover up this bird in a different color anyway. So just taking a little bit of orange that I created. And I'm going to come in here, <clears throat> both beaks. So my white here, my branch is already dry. I can put my finger there and use it as, my, as a guide. Now I'm holding my brush a lot closer to the tip. <clears throat> this is a more precision process, a little more precise. dropping a layer of orange there over the beak. It's a little too pointy for a cardinal, I think, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit wider. Just because you make pencil lines and you drew it all out first doesn't mean you have to be exact with your, um, you have to stick to those pencil lines. You can modify things as you go. Also, when I take black, when I outline the back part of it, I'm gonna shorten up the beak a little bit so it's not quite as long, okay? So orange on that beak, orange on this one. And again, if you want, makes it easier, outline it first. Your beak will also take a second layer. <clears throat> so don't worry about it being transparent. Drop a layer of paint and move on. Okay. 
Once you've done that, take a little black. I got some black here, just putting it on my plate. Don't need a lot. Actually, I think I already had some on my other plate. I am not the most organized painter on the planet. I do, I do try, but today is a little more relaxed than I usually, a little more relaxed with my process than I usually use. So I just grabbed the same little liner brush. I didn't have to clean it up too much because there's, uh, the black paint will over, will overpower the orange paint easily. I could, so when you're done with the orange, you can simply do this. Wipe off the extra with the orange with a paper towel and then switch over, dip it right into your black paint. Uh, whenever you want to make a really skinny line without one of these small liner brushes, what you can do is take your brush, press it up against the paint and the plate and spin it, pull it away as you spin it. It makes your uh, tip really, really pointy. So again, you push it up against the palette in the paint, spin it as you pull away, and that gets, makes it really, really pointy. So now what we can do is we can go right in here and work the edges. I'll give you guys a close up here in just a little bit. So all I'm doing is outlining um, I'm not outlining the eye, I'm not doing anything with the eye just yet. Just the black mask on our male cardinal's face. Okay, same thing with our female bird. Okay. I've got a little bit of orange on my finger when I touched the, the body here, some of it was still wet, so I accidentally put some here. I can ignore that and paint over it, or I can even fix it by adding some black. That's what I'll do, I'll fix that by adding a little bit of a black part or a gray part, some of these little um, dark areas on our birch tree. We're gonna add those to that section there to clean that up. Other thing I could do, guys, I can take a little bit of water on a paper towel, towel, wipe that off, and it comes right off. First thing I always try to do is see how I can use it in the painting. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover that with one of our black marks or gray marks. Okay, once we've got this, we're just going to go in and color in the inside of the bird, the eyeball. It's all flat right now. It's going to look nice and flat. Okay. Pretty much like that. Okay. You guys got about a minute before we move on and what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start adding some branches, some of these little branches out here. <clears throat> we're gonna take some gray. We're gonna mix some gray together, uh, black and white, and start making some small branches all the way around. We jump around from step, so we jump around from different areas, within different areas because the piece is kind of complex. Uh, we jump around. As we move around and do some of the other steps, the areas that we worked on previously are drying. So by the time we're done with some branches, we're gonna be able to come in and do another layer over our trees. Okay, by the time we're done with that layer on the trees, we can come back and do another layer over our birds. Okay, at that point, when we do the next layer, we're gonna do the, on the female bird, we're gonna do this finished color, right? Um, and so that's how we do this, we jump around from step to step, doing different areas, and that allows the previous steps, the paint layers that we placed to dry, allows those to dry, okay? All right, guys, you guys got about 30 seconds before we move on to the next step. We don't want you painting all day and all night. I know some of you guys can, but uh, you know, we're trying to keep it to a reasonable amount of time. So, I'm going to continue with, let's see here, I'm going to take my little quarter inch brush that I was using earlier to color in my birds, this little guy right here. I'm going to clean it up a little. And what I do is I'll take my brush, my cup. I just kind of swirl my brush around in that water. When I pull it out, I simply wipe off any extra paint like this, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take mostly white, and I can, I can use another plate for this, but I don't need a lot of paint. I don't need a whole bunch of paint for this, so maybe I'll just use a little edge over there. OK, 
Okay, I took a little bit of white, brought it over, and I'm going to take a little bit of black. Don't need a lot. We're going to make some gray. Okay, so mixing in some, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. Introduce your black a little tiny bit at a time. Once you've got that mix, we're going to be using the skinny edge of our brush. Okay, not the flats, not the broad side, but the skinny edge. And what I do is I press that brush up against the plate like this as I scoop up paint. It makes my edge even skinnier. <clears throat> we want to work skinny first. Always err on the side of making your branches skinnier than what the finished product is going to be. That's easy to fix. If you want broader, larger branches, you simply add a little extra on the edges. <clears throat> if you start too, sm too fat, too thick to begin with, you can that will be a lot harder to fix because you have to erase, you have to remove paint. So for example, watch what I do here. Again, skinny side of my brush like this, not the broad side like this. I'm going to be brushing like this up here on top. Okay. Now I usually will start at the top, uh, work our way downwards, right? That way we're not putting our hand in paint. However, because the branches are all kind of spread out and there's a lot of space in between, we don't have to worry about it too much. Um, so, but up here, I use my finger, I place it up against the canvas. I'm going to work on this branch right in here, the one that goes under this red bird. So somewhere up here towards the top, again, skinny side, skinny, skinny, skinny. I do that. One long skinny line all the way across. Slightly curved, but the skinnier, especially at first when you're less experienced, the skinnier the better. Now, if I want to make this thicker, and they're thicker at the base than they are at the edges, I'm just going to take my same brush, I just maybe start somewhere in the middle, and work my way backwards. Adding a little bit of girth at a time, a little bit of thickness at a time. Okay, I'm trying to do this without blocking the camera, I know it's a little tricky. I, mean, I want you guys to be able to see this, okay? Okay, there we go. Make one, then I move on to the next one. I'm not adding any of the black parts or anything like that. I'm gonna come across on the other side. I've got a branch right in here somewhere. And your branch placement can vary a little bit. Nothing, nothing's off limits. You can uh, have branches up here at the top. Wherever you want a branch, you just put one in, okay? Now, as I get to the outer part of my branch, Okay, as I get close to the edge, let's see, let me, let me, uh, let me do this. I'm going to start one right here. Again, I start, I come out, as I start getting towards the edge, towards the point, at the very end, I pull away as I'm brushing. I'm brushing and I pull away from the canvas. That helps make the point nice and skinny. Now, if you don't have one of these little brushes, you can also use a little liner brush, my little skinny liner brush that I had earlier. That also helps do the same thing, basically. So this little guy right here, remember what I do? Let me make a little bit more here. And they can all be different shades of gray. They don't have to be all be the exact same shade of gray. So again, I take my brush, spin it. So let's see, maybe we've got one over here. As I start getting towards the edge, or to, to the point, I'll pull it away from the canvas. I'll pull away from the canvas as I'm brushing like that. So I'm brushing and then I pull away. Okay. And then again to this one, all I, all I really need to do is add a little bit at a, at a time, a little more thickness, a little bit at a time. This helps keep you from going too wide too quickly and then that's harder to fix. Okay. I'm going to make a few more of these, a couple more of these. We'll have one over here. Later on, I'll come over and I'll add black accents and snow and stuff to some of these. Okay, But for now, they're just gray. Let's see. Maybe over here, we got a branch. Just like on the original, we got a branch that comes out from behind the other side of this tree and wraps around, comes over.
close that on the other side. And they don't have to be perfectly, completely gray. They can be slightly um, lighter in some areas and darker in some areas. Let me take a little step back. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, see, way down there, here. Then maybe we've got one that's coming in from outside, from the edge, comes out. Maybe there's a tree out here somewhere. It's got a branch coming around, peaks behind this tree, comes around the front. Yeah. All right, so work on those for now. Obviously, these have little, like I said, these have smaller pointy parts to them. We'll add those later. For now, simply worry about creating the thick bases. Whoops, this one needs a little work. Keeping in mind that the further away from the tree they are, the skinnier they become. All right, work on those for a little bit. Ask your questions. I know branches can be tricky. You can also practice on a paper, on a scratch paper or um, paper plate, etc. What's happening, Sharon Eggers from Minnesota? Titania Greco, don't worry if you missed it. You can always come back and watch the recorded session of this later today, tomorrow. The video is going to be up for at least a couple of weeks, but probably likely through the end of the month, which I think is like three weeks, right? So yeah, if you missed it, don't worry about it. You'll come back and watch the recorded session. Yep, I'll show you guys a close-up of the eye. Somebody's asking for a close-up of the eye. Rose Marie, how's it going, Rose? Welcome back. There's a close-up of the eyes. There's nothing fancy to them there. There's no detail. It's actually, let me, let me show you a close-up of the entire thing. Pretty flat. The birds are flat. The paint's flat because it requires layering to create depth and dimension, okay? So as long as you're kind of like this, look at my branches. Nothing fancy with the branches yet. You just got... Uh, lines that are a little thicker at the base and they just get a little narrower towards the edges. It's all the little details that we add as we go along that starts to give your painting dimension. So if your painting looks anything like mine right now, you're okay. Here's a close-up of the original so you guys see that there's a difference between what I've got on the canvas now and what we're going to have at the end. Okay. Yes, there's glitter on these guys. Got a little bit of glitter here. Glitter, glitter paint. I'll show you guys what I use later on um, and that can always be added on a different day it doesn't have to be added today if you don't have any but okay one minute and we're moving on okay awesome tammy henderson welcome first timer newbie from north carolina all good. I know there's people from all, with all sorts of different levels of experience painting along today. You got it, Lorraine. Thank you for being here. Okay, so again, take your time, folks. What we're going to do next, by now, my white layers on these trees are all dried so I can come over and add another layer over the top. So that's what we're going to do now. Yeah, if you didn't get all your branches in, don't worry about it. In between some of the coming steps, just be ready to jump in to finish up your the branches as, in other words, what I mean by finished to what I've got now. If you're not, if you don't have as many branches as I've got, maybe you're not going to do as many, but if you're trying to get all these branches in and you don't have them in yet, don't worry, you're going to get a chance to do so later. For now, you want to make sure though that this is, that yours kind of look like mine, right? You're not, there's no detail on them yet. Those details come later. So back to my one inch brush. This guy right here. Dip it right into my paint. Okay, scoop up a big old gob. And then I start in on this tree over here. Okay, long, horizontal, vertical, vertical brush strokes. 
Don't know why I'm getting those confused today. The long vertical brush strokes. I'll give you guys a close up here in a second so you can see what a difference in the second layer of paint's already making. So look at the difference between here, right, the second, this area that already has a second layer, and this one that does not. Okay, much more transparent, has a little bit of a light blue hue to it. That's a lot deeper, brighter, and cleaner looking. Okay, so that's what a second layer does on everything in here. So once you've done that, move on. Folks, give me one second. Got a little paint accident I got to address. But you want to be covering up your, your trees, all of your trees, with a second layer of that white paint. continue. So right in here, covered up that orange that I accidentally put on my tree branch earlier. And it covered it up pretty nicely. If some of it still peeks through. I will be using some black or gray to cover over that when I add the little details, all these little gray and black detail, details on the trees. And again, if you need to outline your branches first, please do so. Does make it easier to stay within those lines. If you have any pencil lines that are still popping through, some sketch, some sketch lines, cover those up. Again, this step makes everything a lot brighter, a lot more intense, cleaner. Right in here, right in here where this branch connects to the tree, you can brush into the into the tree like this. Okay, if that branch is connected to the, it's connected to the tree, but if it's on the front of the tree, you're gonna be able to see where that, like here, where the branch connects into the tree, the little edge, okay? If it's behind the tree, then you wouldn't see that. Or if even if it's connected right to the side of the tree, you won't see it. All right, here we go, next one. And so your trees may need a third layer of this paint. I think mine are going to be okay with the second layer. It really depends on your paint, on the pigments within your paint, and the color that you choose you chose for your background. So if your uh, if your trees are a little on the transparent side still, and you can see some of that background coming through, you would do a third layer. I think mine are going to be okay with the second layer. We'll see here. We'll decide here in a bit. So 
So for this second layer that we're doing, I'm actually making it a little bit, a little thicker. Paint is being applied a little bit, has a little bit more thickness to it. It's gonna take a little longer to dry, but it, the coverage is better. And because we had a base layer that we put on first, that first white layer, it's not, it's, um, I don't have to worry about it as much uh, because it, that first layer helps everything be get nice and even and smooths things out. All right. Okay, cool. You guys got about a minute and we're moving on. What's happening, Amanda? How are you? Sue, uh, Sue saying no sound. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? Give me say, hey Jesse, we can hear you. And then Joy Carol Bomber says steer head. Whoops, lost your comment. Let me see if I can scroll. There we go. Steer head or deer head skulls with flowers. Those are cool. I, that would be a good one. I like that. I like that. Elsa and Anna from Frozen says Sana or Santa. Awesome, Amanda. Thank you. So, yes, Elsa and Anna will be coming sometime in the near future. We did do. Um, we did, what's his name, uh, Olaf, a few weeks ago, right before Christmas, I think it was, a couple of weeks before Christmas, we have Olaf. So if you guys want to do Olaf, Olaf is waiting for you. The recorded session of Olaf is waiting for you under that live tab. Okay, folks, here we go. Let's, uh, let's add, we're going to add another layer of red here to this bird. Okay, this, this should all be dry by now. Actually, we're going to go to the female first. Okay, what I've got here. This layer right here, what I actually did to create this light layer over the top is I mixed a very tiny, small batch of a lavender and then I added some yellow to it, okay? So in order to make some lavender, and you don't have to use this color, I'm just gonna show you what I did, then I'll give you some options to other colors you can use that will work just as well. So I took some red and some purple, okay? And I'll show you, I'll show you the process here in just a little bit. So I made a little bit of lavender to which I added a little bit of yellow and then even a little bit of uh, white to brighten things up. So one of my small brushes, I cleaned it up a little bit. I've got some, I've got some blue. I'm gonna take some red, we're gonna make some purple first. Okay, deep purple. So a little bit of red, a little bit of black deep purple. Now I'm going to take some white to make it more of a lavender color. Okay. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit more. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and mix those colors all together and it creates it's almost like a, like an olive or avocado color. Okay, you see that there? That's the color that I used for my female bird. So a little bit of a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, some white to brighten it up, make it lavender. Then I introduce some yellow to it. It makes this really nice, light, creamy uh, avocado color. Okay, you want to mix enough. You want to mix enough so that you don't run out. There is a darker area on the front side of that bird here in the belly part, which we'll address in a little bit. But once you've got the color, you're going to go ahead and apply it. You want to use a small brush for this one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and here in the belly, here we go. Now watch my brush strokes, short. The other ones were long. These are short. I'm creating the look of little feathers, little uh, tiny feathers. 
some of my orange is going to peek through a little bit between some of those brush strokes and that creates a really cool little effect. Okay, we're going to do this all the way through except for where the, the wing is. The wing is going to stay orange unless you want, unless you want it all one color, up to you. But, but look how I work kind of quickly. I'll give you guys a close-up in just a little bit. Here at the top, now I'm using the very edge of my brush. Short. All one color. There are some variations in, the, in the, our original, and I'll show you how to do that later. We're gonna we're gonna drop this one layer all the way through. So work on that for a moment. We are going to be doing another layer of this in a bit. Once this layer dries, we're going to come over and do another layer over this. For the most part, you want this to kind of be like, look a little, a little bit like that, right? You can still see a little bit of the orange peeking through. Now on the edge over here, I didn't, I did this by accident. I didn't, I want to cover that up. Okay. But you can see some of the orange peeking slightly through some of, in between some of my brush marks. From what I saw with some of the pictures that I found of these birds, there were little subtle hits of hints of orange or even red that would pop through. Work on that for a little bit. For those of you just wanted to, um, for those of you that would like to help support the page, I do have a virtual tip jar. Okay, and I, for those of you that can, I would appreciate it. It helps me be able to continue doing this. But I do have a virtual tip jar. I have a Venmo, I have a PayPal, and a Zelle. Okay, this information is all listed in the description of this video. You can see it at the top or the bottom. Um, but Venmo and PayPal are at Painting with Jesse. They, they sometimes ask you for the email, and that's Painting with Jesse at gmail.com. But at Painting with Jesse, Jesse Mendeville is the name on there. PayPal is paypal.me forward slash Painting with Jesse. Both of these have my picture in the account setting. So if you happen to go and Take a look, you'll see me holding a canvas uh, or something like that, but you'll see me there. And then my Zelle is just my phone number, 951-217-2237, 951-217-2237. Again, for those of you that can, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Like I said, it allows me to continue doing these events. You guys can also help share by sharing the page, sharing it with your friends, sharing it on your Facebook feeds whenever you... Uh, when you finish today and you post your picture, uh, if you can tag the page, that would be fantastic. All right, guys, 30 seconds, and we're going to go. We're going to work with the red bird. Let me find a different music channel now. It looks like this one's almost, uh, almost done. Let's see. What can we find? Happy music. Let's go with this happy music. <laughs> I guess it is, kind of, it is kind of happy music. But all right, guys, let's take a look at your questions here really quick before we start to get started on the next bird. Yes, 
Cassie, absolutely, Baby Yoda is free. All of the videos on my lessons currently, uh, that all, all my lessons are free, okay? Uh, as of now, everything that's on this page is free. I don't foresee any in the future where I'm gonna be charging for the live sessions, so, um, but yes, Baby Yoda will be free, okay? So come on out and join. Invite your friends, invite your family. That's, it. That's open to all ages. <clears throat> Kiddos are welcome, of course. Lots of kiddo uh, Yoda fans, but baby Yoda fans, but it is a little complex. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we'll take some time to produce. But all right, same brush, here we go. This layer is drying. We're gonna move over to the red layer, uh, uh, second red layer on our bird over here. Same brush that I was just using. Just cleaning it up a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take some red. This time I'm gonna start up here near the top. So if you notice right here, I'm gonna avoid this area near the eye. So I'm just kind of going around that. That area on the inside is gonna be a brighter, brighter red, almost an orange color, and we'll add that in a little bit. But again, brush strokes, brushing downwards up here. Okay, right here, we do the same thing as we did earlier, curved lines. My brush strokes now are a little bit shorter. Choppier. I'm using the edge like this, the skinny edge of my brush. Okay, not the broad one, but the skinny edge, like this. Here on the belly, they're a little bit longer. It's not until I get over to the wing that they get a little choppy again. Short and choppy. There isn't a lot of variation in this color yet. For this layer, when we do a third layer on here, we're gonna add a little bit of black to our mixture to create these darker areas on that wing and on the feathers, the tail feathers. Tail feathers nice and long. We brush upwards. Okay, once you've done the red layer, you're gonna take a little bit of red, take it over to the side, add just a touch of yellow to it. Just a touch, just to brighten it up a bit. You can also take a little touch of white. So red, a little touch of yellow, a little touch of white, brightening it, bright, brighten up your color a bit. You're gonna use your corners of your little brush or switch to a liner brush and you're going to come in on the just around the face it's real subtle it's not something you can you're going to be able to notice a lot from a distance but you just want a slight variation around the face and actually to be to be honest you don't need to do this up to you let me give you a little close-up now Real subtle tone change. Okay? And there's our little female again. All right. We're going to start picking things up a little bit because, uh, you know, we got a lot of little details, all the details on the birch, on the trees. Okay? We're going to move to those next. Okay? Details. In the trees, the, the black, the browns, or sorry, black, the gray. We're gonna add some detail around our branches. We're gonna come back to our birds. And then for those of you that wanna do the little birds in the distance, we're gonna do a few of those. Okay, let me, let me check our time. We are at two hours into it. So we're gonna pick things up. We're not gonna be painting past three hours. You know, and we've got a lot to cover, so get ready to shift gears a little bit. Don't worry, folks, if you fall behind. Everything that we're doing next, you can always catch up on afterwards. So 
stay with me as long as you can um, as I move around steps let's say as I start adding all the little accents on our birch trees these are really random right they're gonna kind of vary everyone's trees are gonna look a little different but as I move around and add those if you see me move over to the branches and start working on the branches move with me even if your trees aren't all done as far as these little markings right um, when you see me moving over to the little birds and you want to add some little birds move with me you can always come back and add any previous steps that you missed afterwards especially because that recorded version is going to be available okay so just I don't want you guys stressing about oh my gosh Jesse's moving too quickly I understand everybody paints at a different level okay but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that same little brush that I was just using my little quarter inch flat brush clean it up a little bit what I'm going to do even if I've got some sections of my tree that are still a little bit wet as long as it's a little bit this is going to work if your trees are really wet then watch me or if you've got your um, oh I know I didn't add some color down here to our tail so give me one sec sorry folks let me back up a little bit I'm gonna take more of my little lavender color for some reason I'm neglecting our little tail and this could be more of an orange color too later on I am gonna make this a little bit more orange but just to have a little layer of paint there and we'll outline it and fix it up a little bit okay but this is gonna be a little bit more orange than the rest of the bird is okay so there's that but here we go my little brush I'm gonna take some black just black okay Here we go. Now I can start anywhere. Maybe up in here. I'm just using the bristles, the tip of my brush. Really subtle. I'm just coming in here, adding little lines, little markings. Okay. Some of them, some of the smaller, skinnier lines, we're going to make those with one of our liner brushes. In some cases, we're just barely dabbing. We're barely, barely dabbing. And then in other cases, we're going to make larger marks. Okay, like that. There are some gray ones that we're going to be adding in a little bit as well. But right now, we're going to do all of our black ones. Now, this step doesn't take a whole lot of thinking, a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of uh, uh, finesse or technique. Just add a few of these markings, and we move on. Watch how I hold the brush. Again, I'm barely touching. I dip my brush right into the paint, and then I'm using the very tip of my bristles here. no perfect shape on these there's different sizes of them now I'm not an expert on birch trees but basically from both sides of your tree you got some little skinny ones As long as you're being careful that you stay within the edges of your of your outlines you should be okay to move rather quickly through these and again if you don't finish these with me you can always continue on your own so I'm gonna take my brush sideways now like this and I'm gonna come in like this and just
try and make some little skinny lines. You want to make your the tip of your brush thinner, you just press it down into the canvas, right? You press down, make that tip really skinny, and now you're able to make skinnier lines, or skinny lines. Since we're working with the black, what I can also do using this same brush. Now you might want to add a little bit of water to your paint now. So what I mean by that is this. So we've got some black paint. We've got some black paint. Find a spot on your palette plate like this. Now take your brush, you dip it into your water cup. You bring some of that water over and blend it in to your paint. You don't want runny paint, so don't, you don't want to add a whole bunch of water to it, but you do want it to where the paint becomes almost ink-like in consistency, ink-like, okay? Now, and you can test, you can do this, you just touch your canvas and the paint smooths right onto it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that brush again right into that canvas. Press it. Makes my edges really skinny. Now I can go through, in a little bit we're going to outline some of the branches, right? some of those skinny ones, but watch what I do with this. Using my finger ear, this is all dry, I can place my pinky right onto the canvas. Without much effort, I outline my trees. Okay, so we're gonna outline over all of the trees now. Careful here, you don't, when you outline this one here, you're not gonna outline through it, you're gonna outline, this is the tree that's in the foreground, this branch is in the foreground. So be careful when you outline this down here. All right, let me, uh, let me take a moment, give you guys a little bit to catch up. So Linda, Linda Leatherwood Waddell. So if you want, uh, and this goes for anyone that wants to join in on, on this later. Uh, if you're looking for those stencils, the uh, Cardinal stencils, simply look under the event page Go to this event, go to the discussion board, and you'll see the stencils pinned near the top or somewhere in the discussion board. You'll see them. Okay? If you have a hard time, you can email me. If you have a hard time finding them, you can email me at Painting with Jesse, and I'll send those over to you as a PDF file. Okay? So, all right, right in here in front of our bird. Okay, we're going to go underneath also. So remember, this is the one that's in the foreground. So the outline of this branch goes over the top of that tree in the background. We're gonna go behind over here. Okay. Okay. We outline this one now. We're 
wherever you have a branch, you can avoid the outline going through that branch. Just stop short of the branch. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a moment. So I've got a branch, oh no, that's a branch that's coming around the back. I'll give you guys a close up here in a moment. So here, for example, when I bring my outline down, I stop right above that branch because that branch is sticking out from the side of that tree. Unless it was coming out from the other side, from the back, then you would go through it. You, that outline would go right through that. Okay, hope that makes sense. Don't overthink it. It's not that crucial a step. But here we go. Okay. So this tree, you don't outline this edge here because that tree, the idea is that the tree's thicker, right? It's further out than the edge of our canvas. Unless yours is actually really skinny like that, you can create a little outline there on the edge if you want. Okay, so right here, my, this long branch actually comes out from in here. So this outline comes in a little bit and does the same thing here at the top a little bit. Of course, this edge behind the bird, you can see it. So, it takes an outline there as well. I need to add more water to my paint, so dip my brush back into my water cup. I bring that over. Anytime you're having a hard time getting that paint, the black paint in this case, to adhere to the canvas, add a little more water to it. Okay, blend it in really, really well. Water is your friend in this case. It could be your best friend. Okay, and again, press down on your brush so that that tip gets really skinny, and here we go. So this branch here comes around from the back side of the tree, so I'm not worried about that one. Okay, as with this one here, just decision I decided on. I mean, I made, yours can be different. So there we go, everything's outlined. Again, take a little step back from time to time, look at your masterpiece. Make sure you're not missing anything. In a little bit, we're gonna start adding all these little details. Okay, but first we're gonna take a little bit of gray. So I just take a little bit of white, mix it, find a little spot with some more, some of the black, you can grab some of the black, move it over, add a little white to it. So you're just creating a lighter, it's actually a, a dark gray. And all I'm going to do with this is come in here and I'm gonna pick some of these, just overlap a little bit. Okay, there's gonna be some gray ones, just gray. Again, folks, this is your painting, make with it what you want, you can make your own decisions about what your painting looks like. If you want to get creative and change things up, feel free to do so. Do with it what you want. I created this for this session. Um, but there are other paintings out there that are kind of similar. There's lots of cardinal paintings are super popular from what I found. Just a really popular bird, so lots of paintings out there similar to this. Lots of paintings of cardinals and birch trees. But feel free to get creative. Again, I'm just going through and adding some gray. Just This is random. There isn't any rhyme or reason to this. Not like some mathematical, mathematical formula you bust out. You calculate, oh, that takes gray, this one takes gray, that one doesn't. Just randomly go through and add some gray on some of your trees. 
and you're good. All right, take a couple minutes on those and we're moving on. 520, that means 40 minutes. Woo! Again, folks, the very last thing we're going to be doing is the, the birds, those little small birds. We're going to do those last. For those of you that don't want to add them, as I imagine a lot of you guys probably are just going to focus on these guys, and these are going to come in. Either you're not going to put them in, or you might decide to add those later. So we're going to leave those towards the end for those of you that don't want those. We're not going to mess with those till later, okay? But in a moment, we're going to come in and start adding detail to the birds, refining the beaks and the eyes and the feathers. The very last thing that we're going to be doing is adding glitter for those of you that are going to be applying glitter on yours. Glitter is optional, right? For those of you that have some or for those of you that are planning on getting some glitter, I'll show you guys how it's applied. And uh, yeah, you can always add it later, okay? If you don't have it now. So you guys got about a minute before we move on. All right. What's happening, Lisa Houston? How are you? I'm actually outlining the trees with a flat, Panji, Pamij, a flat, okay, I'm using a flat one. Um, and all, what I'm doing is that, but you could use a filbert also. If you press, if, as long as you're pressing that brush into the plate, as you scoop up your paint, the tip gets really narrow, and that's what you're really looking for, okay? But a flat or a filbert will work. Just push it in, make it nice and uh, smooth. <clears throat> or make it nice and thin, sorry. And you'll be good to go. So in case any of you might be wondering, and I don't know that I have a filbert in here anywhere else, I, I probably do somewhere in here, but <clears throat> the flat brush, so the, the technical term for this kind of brush is flat, okay? And they come with numbers and such, right? Actual numbers that indicate the sizes of them, but this is a flat. A filbert tends to have a slightly curved, they're real similar, but the top is curved, okay? But in either case, whichever one you're using, if you press down on the paint as you scoop it up, like this, if you press down, that gets really skinny. Now you come in and you're able to do edges. I prefer to do my edges when they're straight like that <clears throat> with these as opposed to using a liner brush. My little thin, so these technically are round brushes. They're called, the technical term for these, those skinny guys, is round, okay? Um, but some people refer to these as liner brushes, okay? <clears throat> so you can take these little liner brushes and do the same thing, but your lines tend to be a little more stable with this, okay? So anyway, thank you, Pamich, for that question. Great question, but here we go. We are moving on, adding some... <clears throat> moving on to the, tree, to the uh, birds, okay? Now... What I want to do is we're going to start adding some of this lighter color to the coat of the feathers of that female bird. So back to my little flat brush, the one that I was just using, that's getting a lot of use today. Actually, I'm going to the slightly smaller one. 
Let me show you guys. The vast majority of my paintings happen with flat brushes, okay? So here we go. And this one's a little bit, it's getting a little older. The, the uh, bristles are getting a little bit kind of splayed out a bit, but the tip can still get really skinny. If, and this is a number 10 flat brush. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and make more of that lavender color. And what did we mix? This time I'm gonna add a little bit more white to brighten things up a little more. So I took a little bit of, a little tiny bit of blue, a little bit of red, okay? And it doesn't have to match the exact hues on the original, just give me a lavender color. The main thing is you want this to be brighter than the original. Add my yellow to it to get that nice olive finish, or olive tone. Okay, you want to compare it to your original color. Make sure it's a little bit lighter. Add a little bit of white to it at the end if you need more to brighten it up some more. And now here we go. Maybe also a little bit more yellow. And you'll know right away if you've got the right color because you'll do this. Is that brighter? It is. And I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to go through here and just choppy little short brush strokes. Now I'm using the corner of the brush. This corner right here. Either corner. <laughs> Not that corner specifically. But either corner will work. I'm just lightly coming in and just touching it. But again, I work quickly. And this is just for the head here towards the top. I don't cover every single area of the head. I want some variation in color. You guys see that right there? Okay, it's subtle. It's not super obvious. And as it dries, the paint does darken up a little bit but you'll still be able to see the difference. Now as I get down in here, I'm just going to kind of randomly come through short, choppy brush strokes. Curved a little bit, right? Curved. Curved pattern. Okay. And if you want some lighter ones still, take a little more white. Find You don't mix it into your entire batch. Find a little area so you still have some of both. There we go. A little brighter. Now if I come in here, I can add some brighter accents if I want. Okay, just like that. Maybe down here also. A little bird has a little beard, little white markings or lighter markings down there. And then maybe there's a few little feathers in here also that have some of this lighter color. Okay, you guys all see that. Light touch, I'm just barely touching the, the canvas. And there you go. Right now when we add some color to the beak and a little dot of color to the eye things are gonna pop maybe we can add a little bit of dark orange in here to break things up or red in the wing okay but there you go now I'm gonna go ahead and work through this rather quickly because again we're running out of time and I don't want to I don't want you guys to rush too much but I'm gonna take the same little brush okay just I don't need to clean it up just gonna uh, wipe that excess off I'm gonna take a little bit of red just touching the red with the tip of the same brush and I'm just going to come in here and a little bit, a little bit of red, maybe down here also. There's little hints of red. I'm going to dab the paint with my finger. Okay, maybe up here also. A little tiny, tiny bit again. If you're planning on adding glitter to this, 
the glitter goes a long way to covering things up. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black, very little black, let it mix in with some of the red that's on the brush. It becomes almost a really dark purple. And I can just kind of come in here and just add little tiny touches of it. Same thing with the tail. Again, I'm planning on putting some glitter over that, so that's going to make a big difference. Okay. A little bit of orange to the beak. bit of orange over here okay and I did say I was gonna take some of that black to shorten that beak a bit so I'm just gonna same little brush I'm just being really careful with it so to shorten up my beak a little just gonna cover up some of the beak at the base okay there we go it was a little too long for my taste Okay. I'm also going to take a little tiny bit of black and I'm using my little flat brush pressing it so it's really skinny now I'm just going to take a little tiny line down the middle of the beak okay Now, watch what happens on this next step. Little bird gonna come alive, <clears throat> real subtle. My little round, my little liner brush. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of white. Okay, take my brush, I spin it in the paint. Making the tip really skinny. Okay, now I'm just gonna come over here. And I'm just gonna touch the somewhere on the inside of the eye. Now that little tiny drop of reflection in the eye gives your bird life. Okay? It also gives it a little spark or wakes it up. Now, if you notice on the original, we got a little bit of a, a little bit of a red, almost like an eyebrow over the top. I noticed quite a few female cardinals had that little subtlety at the top, and then this one also has a little bit of red that's peeking around there. Those are all optional things. Okay, um, I didn't. Not every female cardinal that I saw had that, but I'm going to go ahead and add it. Little tiny, just the, the little eyebrow. Little eyebrow over the top. Okay. Just took my little liner brush, dipped it in some orange, and there we go. Just gonna take a little bit of my lavender, or uh, sorry, my colors color for the feathers. I'm just going to dip some, drop some in here, clean up the feathers a little tiny bit. There we go. Now, male bird. Here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of black, same brush, same brush we've been using. <clears throat> Some red. 
Okay, move it over to the side and take it just a touch of black. You don't need a lot. And it quickly changes into a more of a burgundy color, deep purple even. Add a little bit of black at a time. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this, it's kind of swirly, doesn't have to be perfectly blended. I'm just going to go through and right up in here, using the skinny edge of the brush, skinny edge, start. There isn't a ton of paint on my brush. It's kind of a, I just grab a little bit, of, little bit of paint and I make it spread. I spread it, spread it so that a little bit goes a long way. I come into the tail. Maintain those long brush strokes. Now right up here towards the top, you can give it, make some little choppy ones. You want some subtle tones in there so you can mix a little bit of either color, black or red. Swirl up your mix a little and blend it in between some of the previous paint, uh, paintbrush strokes. Okay. You come up here those short choppy strokes. On this bird most of the darker colors down here in the feather section, uh, the wing section, so up on top here it's a little bit more of a brighter, the brighter red. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just taking just pure red and just dropping some in here and there. This is kind of random, so just trying to give the bird some variation in that red tone that we're adding, the red tones. Okay. And then let's add a beak. Switching back over to my liner brush, I'm going to grab my orange, sorry, some yellow and some red, mix those two together. Actually, I have some over here, so Now on my, on this eye, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of, let's see, a really light, I'm gonna make almost a pink. Really, really subtle light color. It could even be, it could even be the lavender color that you created for the female. Actually, let's see, what's gonna work here? I'm going to do, yeah, I'm gonna use a little lavender color. Turns a little pink, that's okay. Really, really tiny bit of this paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline very subtly. The eye, okay? It's a really tiny, tiny small circle around the eye. Now when I add my little white dot, it's going to really stand out. So a little tiny dot of white, right, a little reflection of light. There we go. OK, 
Okay. Now that bird's alive. You don't even have, when you create that little outer, lighter color around the eye, you don't even have to go all the way around the eye. As long as you go around it, maybe around the back or the front, or just have a little slight subtle outline, that's all you really need to make that eye stand out. Okay. Um, so next step, we're going to do the little separation between the beaks, top and bottom beak. Middle of the beak, I should say. There we go. Take a little step back. And obviously, there's some differences between the two birds, right? Um, but that doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to recreate an exact version of the original, um, especially since everything's freehand. You know, you have. But anyway, take a moment. We're going to be doing some outlines on the branches here in just a bit. Let's see. <laughs> Pamich says something about border or rim, and I'm not sure which part of what I was describing uh, she means. But <clears throat> maybe I used a maybe I used a description of something that didn't wasn't appropriate, I don't know. But border or rim of the eye maybe is what I what she's referring to. But there's a close up of both of the bird's eyes. Okay, and the faces. Okay. <clears throat> okay, you guys got about a minute, then we're gonna be doing some branches, some outlining of the branches and stuff. Oh, I see what you mean at the rim of the plate. I got you. I got you. You got it, Marianne Rideau. My pleasure. April Medina. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. You're talented. I got you, Pamidja. I've got. I got you. You're talented, April. If you're. Uh, you're rocking a two-month-old in one arm while you're painting here. That's definitely talented. Okay, folks, so little liner brush. I'm going to take some of this black paint. And again, I'm moving, I'm moving back and forth between my plates. Again, usually I use one plate as a palette where I have all my paint, all my main paints. And then I use a second plate as a, as a mixing plate where I mix my colors. Today I'm being a little bit random. It's okay. It's all right. So just taking some water and adding it to my paint. Okay, just doing this. Mixing in that water really, really nicely, making sure that that paint gets a lot of this water. As long as it's not runny paint, we're good. And then what I'm going to do is I spin my brush, right? I'm using a little liner brush once again, a little round, skinny thing. Now, <clears throat> This is where things get a little tricky. This is where some of you guys are going to go, oh my gosh, Jesse, this is tough. It can be, okay, but you're going to be using just the very, very point of your bristles. You're barely going to touch the canvas, and this may take some practice. You can take another paper first, another plate, if it's your first time doing this, and you want to just get a little practice. What I like to do is I'll take my finger, I'll place it on the canvas, and it allows me to use that to stabilize my hand. Another thing is I'll actually put my palm down on the canvas like this, as long as it's wet, uh, dry, and I can come in and do things like this. So here, right up on this edge, I'm gonna create an outline like this. And the, the idea is that when you get over to the edges of your lines, that you get really, really skinny. And part of the way you do that, part of the process is when you get to that point, you pull your brush away from the canvas as you're brushing along. You're brushing and you pull away, that tip gets really, really pointy. So here we go. We're just going to start over here. Okay, so like right in here. Subtle line, come out, pull away. Okay. So I can go back over here now and I'll do this. Okay. Again, make sure you work that water into your paint. <clears throat> and that's going to really, 
go a long way. And water is the magic that helps this process and makes it look a lot easier that if it wasn't for that water, if it wasn't for the water, this would be a lot harder. So use that water. You just don't want it diluted so much that it becomes runny paint. <clears throat> okay, so here we go, some more. Over here. We'll start right over here. Because I've got water on that paint, it makes it really easy to work with. water and then placing my hand up against the canvas. So this one right here is going to look like this. It's going to have all these little branches kind of stemming off the tip. So right in here, again my palm is on the canvas. As I get to the end I start to pull the brush away from the canvas. As I'm pushing and pulling away it starts to get skinnier. Okay, maybe that's got a little branch that comes off right there, maybe this one over here, it's a light touch, really light touch. And if you guys want to get some practice before you apply this to your canvas, please feel free to do so. You don't have to do this right now, right? You can always apply this later. Watch me now, get some practice, and then do this on your own later. And then this one up here maybe is going to have like that. Okay, moving over here. In some cases I'm starting out from the end and moving inward, in back towards the tree, or I can start at the base of the tree and move out. Either way is fine, whatever you're comfortable with is good. There are so many different approaches to painting, to art, to drawing, there's no one correct way. It's what works for you. There are a variety of methods that you can mix and match. Let's see, over here. Skinny, skinny. Maybe this one isn't going to go out as far as on the original. This one's going to be over here somewhere. Branch comes down. But again, folks, I just want to reiterate, it's the water. If you're struggling to, if you're having to brush over the same area plenty, oh, more than once, it's because you need to add a little more water to your paint. one too. Again folks don't stress too much. I know I'm moving quickly through this. All of this you're going to be able to come back to and add it later. So if you're not able to keep up, I know I want to move, I move through that pretty fast. Don't stress. Okay but there you go. Little subtle tiny little branches for our little birds, our little friends. Okay. You guys got about a minute before we move on to that next step. I'm going to take a little step back and look at my painting from a distance. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Like I said, I like to forget a lot of stuff. 
What we're going to do next is we're going to add the snow in the background. We're going to add all that little falling snow. Um, and then we're going to start in on the little birds. I'll do a couple of them with you. Maybe I'll do all three. We'll see. We got one, two, three birds. We're going to add all the little falling snow, all the little accumulated snow on some of the branches and stuff. Uh, and then, then we'll see. We'll add some glitter and we should be pretty good, pretty good shape. Don't forget folks, if you don't, if you weren't here when I was talking about it earlier, we got um, Baby Yoda next week, Grogu. We got a little Grogu next Tuesday. I'm gonna teach you guys how to draw completely from scratch, everything that's on here. I am providing a stencil for you guys that want to use one. If you go to the event page, you'll find this under the event tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook. Go to the discussion board and you'll see the stencils posted near the top. You can also email me directly at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com and I'll send you a copy of that stencil. Okay, so that's next Tuesday. The following Tuesday, now these are, I know these are, some of these are more kid centric, but they're open to anyone, whoever wants to paint. You guys are more than welcome. If you're a kid at heart, come join me. So we, we got uh, Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon, little baby Toothless, okay? Now I haven't provided a stencil for this one. I probably will go check out the details. Same thing under the event tab. This one's the following Tuesday, not the one coming up the following Tuesday. And then either two weeks after that, I don't remember exactly what the date is on this one, but for those of you that are Among Us fans, kiddos with Among Us fans, this is a hugely popular game. I'll be teaching you guys how to draw your own Among Us characters. You'll be able to customize it, right? Let's say you're, some of these guys have bunny ears or plants on their heads or whatever, but you'll be able to customize that. Drawing this from scratch, okay? And then lastly, I don't have the event for this one up yet. Be on the lookout. We've got our little little polar bear family with some uh, aurora borealis lights in the sky. I don't have a date for this one yet, but I'll have it posted either tonight or tomorrow. Okay? But all right, let's move on to some snow. So all we're going to do, I'm going to start with the uh, little falling snow. And you can do this one of two ways. You can do this with the tip of the bristles of any brush, whoops, you don't want that. So I'm going to start with this, and you can vary the size of your brush if you want. And you dip your brush right into the paint. This is the easiest way to do this. And you just start quickly moving through here, and uh, the lighter the touch, the smaller the snow, the snowflake or snow fall. The more paint and the, more, the harder you press on the canvas, don't press too hard. The more pressure you apply, the bigger the snow. I usually we'll do this until I'm all the paint's depleted on the brush. As I'm going through here, the little dots get smaller and smaller. But I can also just barely touch it and uh, I'll make some small dots. I can also use my finger to help stop my hand so I don't press too hard. So I'm, at the same time, my finger's touching the canvas, and then the, the back of the brush touches the canvas at the same time, or, or right behind. So that's one way I can also take the, um, one of my lighter brushes. One of these guys here, and I can do the same thing. Working with a brush it can be a little bit trickier, but you can also make some really, really tiny ones by barely, barely touching. Okay, and you can also make bigger ones by pressing harder into the canvas. Because these are brushes and they're soft, there's no chance of damaging the canvas, so you can put a lot more pressure. So as much, as much snowfall as you want,
Now, as you're applying some of this snow through the on your canvas, applying your snow, you can also you also want to come over in the front of your birds, even though there's glitter to come later. You may want to save this step for a little bit later if you're going to apply glitter to it. You can also apply glitter right over it. Some of the snowfall obviously would be falling in front of your birds, so maybe drop it. Put a few of these little tiny ones right in front. So what do you guys think? Glitter first, or do we work on the little birds first? Actually, you know what? We have no choice, because I, since I added some of this paint in front of the birds, we're going to have to do some of those small little birds first. Okay, as much snow as you want, up to you. The more snow you apply, the I think the it looks a lot cooler the more snow fall you've got, but it's up to you. Next thing I'm going to do, and I can do this with either one of my little liner brushes or a flat brush, I'm just going to come through here and apply some snow accumulated on some of these little areas, right, like this. And I'm just dabbing, just dabbing that brush right across the top of the surface that I'm putting snow over. Okay, like right in here, these little, these little corners and stuff, these little sections where branches come off of the trees. Right in here. Pick your spots. If there's any areas on top here, maybe you don't like the shape of your branch, maybe you can use snow to cover it, right? Camouflage it a bit. I just switched over to one of my flat brushes. And there we go. If you wanted, even though this is white, white over white, you could even take some of this. Oops, it looks like I accidentally grabbed a little bit of green. You don't want to do that. You can take a little bit of this and even, even on the front of your trees, like this on the bark. It's probably going to look more like bark than it will snow, but these little variations will make for cool. Um, finishing touches. So in other words, you can take globs of the paint and just find little spots. This could either be snow or simply bark. Whatever you want it to be, whatever it looks like to you. But add as much snow as you want. And just kind of dabbing my brush throughout. All right, looking good. 558. Holy, we're gonna go past. We're gonna go past uh, three o'clock a little bit. I mean six. Looks like six o'clock. So take a look, guys. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I am gonna go and go with the glitter first before we do the the birds. For those of you, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw some of those little birds here in a moment. There's nothing to them. They're just miniature versions of this, some of these with a lot less detail. They come out very quickly. But for those of you that are going to be adding glitter, in case you're not planning on doing the birds, and again, this order doesn't really matter too much. But just in case some of you are deciding not to add those little birds, but you're going to add glitter. So I've got this. So one of the glitter types that I use is this Glitterific from... Uh, I picked this up, stuff up at Hobby Lobby. Just gonna, I'm just going to dip my brush right into the paint. Whoops, hold on a sec. Oops, there we go. And it looks like this. <clears throat> this has a bunch of little subtle tones in there. Okay, it looks like... Let's see if my camera picks it up. There we go. All I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to come in here 
and just add a bunch of this glitter throughout. Now I don't have to add it on every single part of the bird. I can use this to create a little bit of, of uh, dimension in there as well. It's like with the paint. The subtle variation can make the bird look like it's got dimension, depth. Okay, and I can brush it. So this is glitter paint, or, or glitter just floating around in glue. And this glitterific stuff is really chunky. Sometimes I add water to it. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of this and add it to the red parts or orange parts of my other bird. Come over here and all right, take a look at that. Big difference. Okay. Now, I'm gonna look at the comment section. I'm gonna take some, take a quick look there, see if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that. And then we're gonna move into adding a few of these little birds. We're gonna sign our piece and then we're good to go. Okay, so I imagine about another 15 minutes. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Karen Brower Lee, you got it. Absolutely, come on and finish it tomorrow. Amy, you're very welcome. Angie Christie, absolutely. As, again, as soon as it's over. Oh, Carol O'Brien. And folks, as you guys are leaving, if you're leaving as soon as you finish, right, please don't forget to send me a picture of your masterpieces. I want to see what you guys create. I like to share the paintings in a giant post after I accumulate a few of your paintings. I add them all to, all to a post where, that I share on my main painting with Jesse Page. So what you guys want to do is you want to send it to me via messenger here on Painting with Jesse. So you would simply go to the uh, Painting with Jesse page, click on send message, and then if it's your first time messaging me, I believe you first have to say something like, hey, Jesse, you know, just say something, some hello or whatever. And then you can, on a subsequent, subsequent message right afterwards, add your picture. That's what some people have told me. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but if you have any problem on the first message, adding a picture to your post, simply say hello first and then right afterwards. Don't wait for a reply from me. Simply send me another message with your picture. That's what I've heard people have to do. I don't know that that's the actual case, but just in case you have any problem sending me a picture. Okay, but definitely send me pictures of your masterpieces at Painting with Jesse at Gmail, uh, uh, sorry, at, here on Messenger. Okay, painting with Jesse, messenger on painting with Jesse. And then again, if you guys haven't yet, please like and follow the page so you get notifications of all the upcoming stuff. Okay, all the upcoming events. All right, so <clears throat> there's that. Patricia, you got it, my pleasure. Okay, guys, who's ready to paint a few little birds? Thank you, Manzi. <laughs> Tara, that's okay. Newbie. All newbies are welcome. All newbies are welcome. Okay? But yeah, here we go. We're going to make some little birds. <laughs> who said, who said, Angel says, mine looks, <laughs> mine look like, looks like Angry Birds. Actually, this little guy right here also looks like Angry Birds a little. So what I would do with this one here, if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, I like it. But if I wanted to change the shape a little bit more to look like the original, I would round this back part out a little bit more. So right in here, I would round it off a little more, and that would give it more of a feel like this one. But I, I still like that. I like that a lot. So I'm okay with it. But, okay, little birds. Here we go. We're going to start with the one up on top. Okay, now I'm going to give you guys a close-up. i got to get a close-up tight shot of my 
canvas so you guys can see what I'm doing. There is not a lot of detail on these little birds, so um, they look better from a distance. Let me show you, for example, let me bring my, bring my light back up. Hang on one second so you guys get a good view. Okay. Normally, again, normally I add my uh, glitter last, but because I know some of you probably don't want to make the little birds, wanted to do that first. So look at that bird. Not a whole lot of detail. Look at this bird right here. Looking over at this couple going, hey, what the heck? This one right here. She's with him? Saying something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure what she's thinking, but she doesn't look very happy. Or maybe she's just like, what the heck? What's happening over there? And then this guy's just staring at us going, uh, excuse you? But you see again, there's not a whole lot of detail. Okay, real subtle, but we're going to start with this guy up on top. All right, and again, I'm giving you guys a close-up of my main canvas because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing up close. So you can draw it first if you want, or you can simply start in with your, with your uh, paint brushes. But I'm going to take a little, my little watercolor brush or watercolor pencil. If you guys don't have these, these are handy for drawing. You can wipe off. These are chalk. I like to use chalk better than these, but I don't have any dark chalk right now, so we're going to use this. So find a branch, maybe here, maybe here, uh, maybe right here. I'm going to put my bird right in here. So we're just going to draw. And your, your tail could be behind your branch or it could be in front of your branch. Mine's going to be behind it. Okay. So there's the top of the back of my bird. There's the tail behind the branch. The little belly goes around the front sitting on top you're not gonna be able to see its feet strategically I'm not I'm not showing its feet I'm not the, I don't want to have to draw them it just complicates things and then the head is just a little miniature version of this guy so it's a little triangle with the little the little head right a little tuft of hair let me give you guys a closer look still let's get that up nice and tight there we go I think that's better and then you got a little subtle beak. You can barely see it. And then you connect the whole thing together. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and color it. So I'm going to use my little tiny liner brush. Just going to grab some red. Hang on one second, folks. There we go. There you are. A little liner brush was hiding from me, so I'm just grabbing some red. Spinning my brush into the plate so that makes it nice and skinny. And again, the, this bird's behind the branch, so. So I'm outlining it first. And again, folks, I know that some of my events seem like, you know, we paint, especially more recently, I think I've been painting longer and longer on some of these events. But I like for you guys to be able to see everything that I do. Okay. I know some of the steps are a little quicker than others, but for the most part, we take a little time to develop the piece. And so you guys learn at the same time. So I'm going to take a little bit of red and a little, actually, no, sorry, I'm going to take some black. A little bit of black and you're barely going to be able to notice this but a little black mask Taking a little bit of orange, I'm gonna add a little tiny beak. A 
little tiny white dot for the eye. Whoops, too big. There we go, but I like that. I'm just going to take a little bit of black. Yeah, it's real subtle, that, um, that eyeball should be real, or the reflection in the eye should be really subtle. Take a little step back, look at your bird, does it need refining? I think mine does, it needs to be a little bit thicker. So, and then uh, can add some more red to the body and to the tail. There we go. Don't forget to take a little step back. Look at your piece from a little bit of a distance so that you can get a good feel for it. Watch how I'm holding the brush. Now I'm really close to the tip, right? Okay. Next one. We're going to make the one that's looking over at the couple going, what the heck? What's happening over there? Or again, what, what she's with him, what's he doing? What's he doing? So let's see. That one is going to go. Let's see, right here. We're going to put that one right here. So I'm going to take, I'm actually going to start with my orange base, a little bit of an orange base. And again, this is really subtle, so there's not a lot of detail on this. So a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, a little tiny bit. Then I'm going to add some of that lavender right over the top. You'll see what I'm talking about here in, in a bit. But first, actually, we're going to draw it. So this one, similar shape to this one over to that one up there, but this is the back tail behind the branch. Okay, a little belly. Okay. Look at you guys. You guys are still about 250 devices on right now. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. I know some of you guys are just kind of hanging out, watching. Maybe you're going to paint later. But uh, for all of you guys that have been painting throughout this whole process, you guys are awesome. Here at the top, little triangle. But this little triangle, the head, her face is looking this way, right? So right here at the top, we got the little point that kind of curves over this way. <clears throat> now, for this one, I'm going to take a little bit of orange, really, really light orange. I'm going to add some white to it. Make it really subtle, light. It's going to be more of that color here in just a moment, but I'm going to take some of this. So it, I, all I did was mix a little bit of red with a, some yellow, really light, light red amount of red with some yellow, some white. Now I just took a little bit of red, a little tiny bit of red, and went around the outer edge of the top and the back. And this is going to come up to the head a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. You 
You could also use the same original color, the um, purple. So the lavender mix with a little bit of yellow to, to get a, close, a color that's closer to this. So if you want this guy to be that color, you're gonna do the purple and the blue. Oh, sorry, the red and the blue to make purple, add some white to make it lavender, then add a little bit of yellow to make it more like this. This bird's more about a distance, so you can get away without having to add a whole bunch of that detail. It still works, it's still a little female. And now I'm gonna take my same little liner brush, I'm gonna take some black, and right in the very center of that head, we're making a little block. Take a little step back, look at your bird. Do you have to shape it a little bit? Do you have to add something here? Do you have to add something there? For example, I can come over and make the head a little bit larger, just a little bit. Don't forget folks, please share the page, invite your friends. If you know anybody that would like that might, you know, have some fun with this sort of stuff. Let them know. Hey, have you checked out Painting with Jesse? Send them over. When you share your uh, picture on your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever, tag me in it. Tag Painting with Jesse in it. That would be awesome. Okay, so what makes this bird look like she's looking in this direction is we're going to take a little bit of orange and we're gonna drop a little round orange circle right in the middle of all this towards the bottom of that face. Cause that's the little beak, but it's gonna look like a round little dot cause she's facing us. All about the perspective. So just gonna take a little bit of orange. So I know this is a little tricky folks, especially with these little small birds, but don't stress too much. As long as they look like birds from a distance, nobody's going to sit there and go, oh my God, what the heck is that? When you're up close, they don't look like a whole lot. It's when you're from a distance that they, they're they going to look a little bit more like birds. There's a little bit of, a, of an optical illusion going on. So, my little liner brush right here down the center. She's looking in our direction. So there's that beak right there. Now, I would suggest letting this dry before you come in and add the little drops for the eyes, a little, two little tiny, tiny dots on each part of the outside of the, of the face, of the eyes. And the reason you wanna let this dry first is because if you miss and you don't quite get the dot where you want it, it's easy to wipe off once all of this is dry. So we're not gonna add that now. We added it to this one because this one was simple. This one's smaller, this one's trickier. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I'm not adding those little tiny dots, the little reflections for the eyes. I'm not adding those. We're gonna let that dry before we do that. We're gonna make one last bird down here. And we are pretty much done. Let me move my camera back a bit. Let me drop down my uh, drop it down just a touch, and we're gonna zoom in on. Let's see, right in here. Or we could also put it over here if you want. Probably over here would be better, a better choice. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Right over here, let me turn my camera toward, I mean my canvas towards me. 220 of you, still 222, 226 devices still hanging out. Awesome, okay, right here. Actually, let me turn the original over towards me a bit also because I can't quite see the angle. All right, so right in here. You guys already know how we do this. Little belly. This one maybe has the, uh, yeah, this one also has the, the tail feathers behind.
little triangle for the head. And here we go. I can switch brushes and get a slightly bigger one. This is going to be my one of my red ones. Whoops, went across the front of that branch. It's okay, we can fix that later. Because these birds are far away, not a whole lot of detail is necessary. We can get away with making these rough versions of birds. Okay, some black. Switching over to my liner brush, can take some black. Kind of similar to what we did with a little female up on top. Female bird up there. The little mask is facing us. Okay. Just taking a little bit more red. Again, they don't need much detail. Because of the birds in the front, and your eyes go up to these birds, those are just kind of, they're off in the distance. You can really get away with just creating some general shape birds, right? It's just kind of a subtle, everything's, everything's, <clears throat> everything's an illusion. So here we go, little, little drop. And then same thing, I would wait to add the little uh, white dots on that one. Our female bird up here at the top is already dry, so I can add the dots to that. Okay. I would also go in there and clean this up, branch up a little bit. I would also clean up the edge there, what I can do with that. Take a little paper towel, take a clean edge of a paper towel. Dip in a little bit of water. My water cup. And then come in here and lightly. And there we go. Clean that up. So I'm going to see if I can go ahead and do this. I got a little bit of white on my liner brush here. There we go. <clears throat> and those are the little birds. Let me fix this. Last thing we want to do is sign our masterpieces. Actually, the last thing that I would normally do is first I would so first I would sign the piece and then I would flip it on its head. 
and I would paint the bottom edge of the canvas. So hold on one sec, let me let me fix this. So I would sign it, flip it on its head, and paint all of this in here, whether I, I paint it all blue, like the front, or I wrap the trees around. That's up to you if you would do that, but I would just take some light blue paint across the bottom there, let it sit like this so it dries, and then we're good to go. But, oh, and then also the other thing I could do is take this tree branch and, and wrap it around to the side here. Okay, now I can tell that I didn't, I've got a bunch of white from where I was touching it on the edges, but I would also clean that up. And I would take that branch and wrap it around the side. Okay, that's just what I would do, right? Not something that's not necessary for everyone to do. It's a choice. But what I do want to do, and I always tell people, sign your masterpiece, especially if you're newer to painting or wherever you are as you're progressing or as you move in time, forward in time with, with this stuff, you... Um, your painting style will change. Your, you know, your abilities can get better, all that stuff. And you want to be proud of what you made, whatever stage you're in. So I'm just taking a little bit of blue here, mixing a little bit of water with it. I could also take any color that I want. It doesn't have to be blue. It could be yellow. I think yellow would be pretty cool but I just find a little spot in one of these corners, maybe over here, maybe over here. We'll go here. And I'm gonna sign it with my last name. And there we go. That's the last little step. Okay? But all right, everybody. Not leaving just yet. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your questions there in the comments. Got a bit of a mess to clean up over here. But you guys know how this works now, right? For those of you that are new, we have a lot of really fun projects coming out throughout 2021. If you guys are new here, don't forget to please like the page so you get notifications. Invite your friends. Send me pictures of your masterpieces. Uh, also, don't forget the... Uh, for those of you that can, it's greatly appreciated. If you cannot, of course, that's perfectly fine too. I appreciate you guys being here. I really do. But if you'd like to contribute, help support the page, here is my virtual tip jar info, Venmo, PayPal, and Zelle. Be careful when you use Venmo or PayPal. Make sure that my picture is in. The, you'll see my picture there. Zelle is pretty basic because it's just my phone number, but Venmo and PayPal... It's at Painting with Jesse on both of them. In the description of this video, I put all this information there. And there's an actual link to PayPal. You can click on it and it'll take you there. But either one of these, you want to see my picture, okay, up there. But anyhow, that's for those of you that can. You guys can also help by support by uh, sharing the page, okay, inviting your friends and all that good stuff. But all right, everybody, Diana, you got it. Monica, my pleasure. And I hope to see you guys all here very soon. Hope you guys all come back for more fun. Deborah, you're very welcome. Penny, you got it. And don't forget, folks, please send me your pictures. I really want to see what you guys came up with. Okay? Oriana, or Orissia, sorry. Orissia, you got it. My pleasure, my pleasure. Paulette, thank you. Christy, thank you. Julie, thank you, thank you. Judy Boyle from Ontario, you're very welcome. But okay, guys, don't forget also, if you guys can go over to my main page and um, uh, chime in, look for the post from a few days ago about what I want, what you guys want to see in um, February. I'd love to, you know, use your ideas to create some fun stuff, okay? But okay, guys, thank you again. I will see you guys all very soon. Bye-bye now.